All right, folks, we are back from our break. And on this week's show, Ben takes us through the news and I've brought in some help to bask in all the spring clean challenge glory from our project system. Also, one lucky winner will get a chance to pick up the Marvel Crisis Protocol core set from store.ontabletop.com. To be in with a chance to win, you need to be a subscriber to the channel. Leave a comment below. Give us a thumbs up and if you can, share it around on social media. But sit back and relax because we're back and the weekend starts now. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Weekender. Did you miss us? <laughs> you liars. <laughs> you utter, utter liars. Yeah. Uh, I'm joined this week by Ben, as always. Somebody has to know what's going on, and it's not going to be Very me. True. Yeah. Uh, free, and I don't have a Johnston brother, but I've got John. Are you stoned, John? Uh, what? <laughs> no, then in that case, John will have to do. We don't have John Stone, but we've got John. So, yeah, okay. we're back. Let the madness begin. Um, mm -hmm. So, before we kick into this week, it's going to be a slightly different show. Yes. For reasons that will come apparent. Um, but I suppose uh, a little bit of uh, forewarning. Next week, we will be doing a theme week. Uh, so, Lazy Squire Games have got Wild Ascent Levon Rising coming mm. out uh, on GameFound, which is uh, exciting and new, I suppose. It's going to be a, essentially a Kickstarter for board games only. Yeah. Um, yes. So, yeah. I imagine quite a lot of board games in future will yeah. shuffle across to that as it opens up. But we're going to have a host of content for it. So, uh, one Let's Play that's so massive we had to split into two, uh, a painting tutorial, a uh, couple of interviews with Robert from Lazy Squire as well. Um, but if you are interested, uh, and it will go live on Tuesday, however, the Game Found page is open already. We'll put the link below. And if you sign up to follow, uh, which almost 11,000 people have already. So mm, this is going to be a successful campaign. <laughs> Get this miniature uh, Indeed, yeah. on the edge for it's free so cool. for being signed up in advance. After the, the thing goes live, uh, mm -hmm. it will still be available, but you'll have to pay cash money for it. It's a shame Lloyd isn't here. It's a bird man on a giant dinosaur. I mean, can you say crude? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He'll be oh. all the way in there. Oh, it's um, basically there's a train and we're sorted, yeah, you know? Exactly. There's also, <laughs> yeah. there's also some giant spider <clears throat> things for the early bird people and other bits and bobs, but you'll find out more about it next week. Like I say, uh, we'll all be talking all the time about it. So yeah, wild descent. Should be fun. Should be wild. Mm. Oh, I like it. Oh, I should have thought of that one. Oh, right. <laughs> where's, where's my script right here? <laughs> you, you lose it. You lose a Lloyd. You lose the puns. This is I know. Where it goes. I know. We suffer. Yeah. So we are doing a slightly different show. So there's going to be a little less of our usual uh, for this return because we are now into summer. Summer means the end of spring, uh, which means we have a spring clean challenge to get to. But we'll be looking at that later on. Uh, we are therefore going to have a, a sort of slightly shorter uh, news segment, and we're skipping the end of the week. But I have a doozy for you next week. Oh, it's coming back in style. So, oh, oh is it ever coming back in style? Uh, well, I say that knowing full well what it's going to be. I, mean, I haven't told anybody else what it is, and I refuse to let them know. The main thing is, if you're no. excited about it, it's probably going to be pretty awesome. So. It's trust, Jerry. It's, We've it's got going trust. To be amazing. <laughs> So, uh, let's get kicked into the news. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh you love. 
It's the motherfucking news. <laughs> so yeah, diving into the news uh, for this week, we had some big stuff from Games Workshop. Um, Dominion has, I'm going to say, come and gone. Uh, it, it is out there in the wild. Well, more or less out there in the wild. Pre-orders are going to go out to people very, very soon. People can dive into that. But we got the full sort of update on what's happening with Warhammer Plus. Mm -hmm. So if you'll remember, this was initially just going to be sort of like a, a, a place for them to show off their animations that they've been doing. So the likes of Adeptus, Astartes, and all that kind of thing that have been happening in the past, Angels of Death and, and Hammer and Bolter. But they've also tied up a whole bunch of additional things into that as well. So now, Warmer Plus is going to be going live on the 25th of August. It's going to be $4.99 a month or $49.99 for a yearly subscription. There are also sort of various prices for the different regions of the earth <laughs> uh, of terror um but included alongside the likes of the warhammer animations they're also going to be doing their own in-house shows uh, the warhammer vault exclusives and also miniatures as well so just to go through all of these first off the in-house shows so there's going to be three shows that they've detailed so far uh, the one of these is going to be called Citadel Masterclass, and that's going to be hosted by Louise Sugden, who's been doing some stuff with Warhammer Community very, very recently, uh, doing sort of like their hobby hangouts and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be showing off full miniatures from start to end, getting painted, a little bit like what we do, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, alongside like in-depth techniques that they don't show via YouTube. So. It's not going to be doing stuff to like battle ready standard. It's going to be taking things to the next level and they're yep. going to be doing lots of interesting techniques and stuff in there as well. So a lot of things that people would like to be better at, but maybe haven't really delved into properly and sort of explored themselves. Mm -hmm. um, there's also going to be the new battle report series. Um, so this is going to be hosted by a guy called Patrick, who seemed very nice. Uh, and uh, <laughs> he's got tattoos and everything. He looks like a lovely man. Um, and uh, this is going to be them sitting down to play both match play versions of Warhammer Major Sigma and Warhammer 40,000, and also narrative events as well. So if you wanted to see, for example, what happened during let's just pick one out of the air, the Siege of Terror. They're mm -hmm. going to try and play that out. If you wanted to see what happened when they went to go and reclaim Galmaraz in Age of Sigma, they're going to be playing that. Uh, but the whole idea is it's going to be done within their own studios with uh, Patrick being on one side and then a whole bunch of people from the Warhammer studio at the same time. Mm -hmm. All sounds pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, they've also got, and this is the one that I'm really interested in, Law Masters. So Lord Masters, mm -hmm. Law Masters is going to be hosted by Wade Price, uh, who is kind of like their well, Lawmaster, uh, and he's going to be taking us through all of the deep, rich, and very varied and entirely retconned lore of Warhammer <laughs> um, all the time uh, to go through things. So, uh, for example, they've talked about doing an entire show just on Abad and the Despoiler, uh, looking at him and all that kind of wow. thing. Wow. Uh, they're going to be sort of focusing on different factions, so there may be one entirely dedicated to the Eldari or Space Marines or just the Imperium at large and that kind of thing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're going to be doing all of that uh, and putting that out as its own show too. On top of that, you've also got what's called the Warhammer Vault. So the Warhammer Vault is going to be all kinds of out-of-print material that is then going to be available digitally as PDFs and that kind of thing for you to pick up through Warhammer Plus. So if you wanted to find old versions of White Dwarf, you can do that. If you wanted to read entirely outdated scenario booklets, you can do that. Um, hopefully, we're going to see some very, very old White Dwarfs in here. Someone has done a lot of digitizing work, as, uh, as John was <laughs> saying to us earlier. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be very cool to see what they do with that. Um, and then there's some exclusive miniatures. Small. Yeah. So the miniatures, uh, you will get one of these miniatures of your choice after a year of subscribing to Warhammer Plus. So you don't get it immediately. Um, you can either choose between the Auric Megaboss, as you can see there, uh, or you can choose the Vindicar Assassin, who I think everyone's I, going to pick. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think the War Boss is going to be that popular. It's, no. it's very <laughs> underwhelming, simply because comparatively, yeah. because it is just a miniature. It's just yeah. a main piece. Whereas yeah. that looks like something yes. that even if you don't play 40k, mm -hmm. it's a nice scenario uh, or uh, just a, a painting diorama project, or project. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. to have. So I mean, it looks like Joe Pineapples up there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this will be avail available uh, after that yearly subscription, as I say. Um, if you want both of them, you get one of them for quote unquote free. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other one you can buy if you want to because you're a Warhammer Plus subscriber, which yep. is. Pretty cool, I guess. Uh, and then every year, there'll be a new miniature 
if you if you subscribe for that full period, mm-hmm. which is kind of cool. Uh, but obviously, it's there so that you don't join, get the miniature, and leave. Yeah. <laughs> um, on top of all of that, obviously, as I was saying, there's going to be the Warhammer animation stuff. Yep. Uh, so that's going to be starting off with Angels of Death and Hammer and Bolter, mm-hmm. and they're going to be released similar to kind of what Netflix and Prime do sometimes, where you get like a, a sort of like a, a section of episodes to begin mm-hmm. with, so like two oh, yeah. or three, and then they're going to be doing weekly episodes from then on. Uh, every Wednesday, I believe is what they said. Um, so you've got to look out for that as well. Now, is it worth it? Personally, I think yes, if you're into Warhammer. Um, I think there is enough content out there on the internet already if you're getting started to probably just dive in and just watch all that. <laughs> uh, but if you're like a Warhammer fan, and you want to start playing the game, well, you want to dive a little bit deeper into the game. I think these are going to be pretty cool. I'm going to give it a go, I think, uh, mainly for the like a couple of their in-house shows. I really like the idea of Lawmasters. I think that's going to be really cool. Mm-hmm. And obviously, their Warhammer animations as well. I think they're going to be quite nice. And for $4.99, that's the price of the two apps, sorry, that are also included in this as well. So if you're playing the game actively mm-hmm. with Warhammer 40k or Warhammer Age Sigma, which gets a new app in this, by the way, uh, then not too bad, I don't think. Um, a lot of people were thinking it was going to be a lot more expensive than this. Um, yeah. So for four ninety nine, you know, I'd say it's pretty good. But that's just my opinion. Uh, maybe you guys have some other thoughts as well. But uh. um, it's cheaper than any other kind of other subscription service if you mm. put, and it offers a lot less as well. I mm. think, as you said, being a fan of the franchise, it's definitely yeah. beneficial. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, I don't think four ninety nine a month is a lot for a subscription service considering the amount of content you well, get back. Yeah. Yeah. Weirdly, yeah. when they announced it and we were talking, it may even have been on a weekender when they just went, Warhammer Plus is coming. It's like, mm, they don't really have anything for it. And at that mm. time, I suggested, I wonder if they'll fold in the actual gaming apps into the subscription. Yeah. Because then at least it means it's it's somewhat cost effective and, yeah. and gives people a reason because with the best will in the world, even if they've been working on this for the better part of a year or more, there's not going to be a huge amount in there mm. um, as far as actual videos and um, animations and shows and stuff go. So they, they need to make that up somehow. I was wondering whether or not they'd be doing something like, um, you know, they've done a lot of comics where they don't quite animate the comics. Mm. Uh, yeah. They take like almost like an audiobook version of the death of Superman and you see like still panels where there's slight movement in it and then they let mm. the audio track play i was wondering if potentially they'll flesh out some of the content with some of the audio books because they have a comprehensive library there mm. and well that they may be less difficult for them to do as far as i'm aware the the publications they're doing as part of warhammer vault or anything that's specifically games workshop related so mm. gaming related i'm fairly sure it may change in the future but black library stuff for example is still going to stay black library yeah uh, and Thank God. The Audible stuff is still going to be over on Audible, so you yeah. can get all that stuff for a reasonable price, which is good. Yeah. Um, but it will be interesting what they say what they do next. Um, I know one of the things they did say uh, in their heavily scripted um, stu- two studio pieces, uh, they were like... You can't complain about heavily yeah. scripting. Well, yeah, everything scripted. in this is yeah. heavily scripted. Of course. <laughs> I'm reading it all completely now. <laughs> uh, even all the mistakes. Um, but um, they did say that they're open to comments. So, for example for things like the masterclass and the battle reports and all that kind of stuff, they kind of want people to be like, we want to see this. Um, so, you know, maybe you know, dive in and share some things with them on social media and that kind of thing uh, and just see where it goes, I suppose. Um, I, but I think, sorry, John, you were saying. Uh, no, I, I think on the surface with all the announcements and stuff about it, I think they're, they've clearly taken a lot of feedback from the community already because no one was sure what the, the charge was going to be. Yeah. And, yeah. We've we've seen over the last year, year and a half, they've been snapping up good animators from YouTube. You know, they they took Mr. Mr. Boylan straight away once Hell's Reach was was finished. Yeah. And he went radio silent on his YouTube channel until he yeah. eventually said, Yeah, I'm working for Games Workshop now and I've got a budget. I can't believe it. And then <laughs> when Astartes came out and then he went radio silent, everyone was like, Oh. We, they were just slowly picking away. They've been doing it for about 18 <laughs> months or so now. Yeah. And then they, the, the announcement. And uh, from my opinion, I think, you know, everyone here is agreeing that the price seems perfectly fine. 
Mm. You're, we're not getting a lot of content, but we're getting a lot of tailored content, yeah. which yeah. is what I like. And I will be giving it a punt because I want that Vindicar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whether I'll paint it or not is another thing. That's how they get you, John. That's, yeah, how, they get, that's, how, they do. that's how they get me. But I, I like that they're, it feels like a positive step. It feels like a community-driven step. And yeah. hopefully it stays that way when it launches and it, it's had its first year behind it and stuff like that. Yeah. What will it mean for YouTube and Twitch? Well, uh, they have, will the community yeah. stop or slow down? They've, doing they've that? said that they're going to, can, everything that was previously on YouTube up until now will continue to be on YouTube. So they're still going to do nice. all the painting tutorials and that kind of thing. Yep. Uh, they're also still going to do whatever was on Twitch. So the, the hobby, hobby hangouts, hangouts. Yep. Uh, those occasional live games they do. Um, but I assume a lot of that stuff may eventually port over to Warhammer Plus, perhaps, um, just for the added production value, potentially. You, um, YouTube and Twitch is definitely the the gateway to Warhammer Plus. That's how I see it's going to... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. They'll be like, if you want more. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. I'd like how, I do like with the animation, there's different, like you were saying, John, about the different animation styles that are going on there as well. Yep. What yep. I was surprised to see, especially in that trailer, was just they all look so significantly different and they yeah. all reach a particular type yeah. of person. And I really like that. But I am one of those persons that will probably not watch something because I don't like the animation style. So that will uh, throw me off Yeah, a bit, I'm but... probably not going to watch Angel of the Death first. I'm going to watch Hammer and Bolter first. Yeah. Me, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to watch Angels of Death first because I'm already familiar with Richard Boylan's animation work anyway. And I know that he did a live stream on his YouTube channel about a year ago, just after lockdown started. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was taking questions from his community and they were saying, well, what happened? What happens to your project now with Astartes being out? And he went, we went back and we changed a lot. So <laughs> there, from those, do you remember when we saw that initial trailer, Ben? We were yeah. like, eh. the the more recent trailers definitely show a change in it. Hmm. I'm not sure yeah. if you still like the art noir style to it, but I, I'm not a fan of the 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 movement. Still feels a bit janky. Mm. I'm still I getting get flashbacks of Ultramarine, uh, oh. but <laughs> but no. it, it cannot be that bad. <laughs> No, so, it, it won't be that so, bad. Yeah. But, um, the story writing will be a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> one, one thing just to sort of close out on the one plus thing, I think one of the main things of this, if you're on the fence, is to wait and see what the de delivery system for this is over the first month or so. Because, I mean, you're still going to be able to sign up and get things, something in that first year, et cetera. You don't have to worry about it on the 25th of August exactly. Yep. Um, but like platforms make or break these kind of things. Like when Disney Plus first came out, a lot of people signed up to it. It's still really hard to use sometimes. Yeah. And it doesn't have the same quality as life as things like Netflix, for example. So if that quality of life is there to deliver the content, that will make a lot of more of this a lot more appealing to a lot of people. But we shall see. The proof is in the pudding. I it? still hate Netflix's interface. <laughs> <laughs> hey, better than Disney Plus. I, Why is everything in Amazon. Spanish? <laughs> I, I don't need yeah. Netflix screaming trailers at me when I accidentally mouse over them. Yeah, yeah. I, as, mu as much as I hate Amazon Prime, I have found some really good obscure stuff on there just when I've not been looking for it. So <laughs> as crap as it was, I have found some good stuff. Most often given to us by Warren. There you go. <laughs> yes. For lossy pasta. There you go. What look Probably. out for that? Yeah, no, don't don't look out for that. <laughs> let's, let's move on yeah. and let's take a look at what's happening in the wonderful world of World War Two. Then, Ben. Yeah. So, um, as well as uh, some awesome stuff for Warhammer, we also have some new stuff for Flames of War as well. Uh, so, the guys over at Battlefront have been putting together some new releases for the Axis Allies stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, this is now stepping over into the Hungarians because uh, we saw the Finns a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, we've had some weeks off about the weekender, but mm -hmm. they're looking very very cool go and check them out uh, but the hungarians are going to get a whole bunch of new kits that are sort of themed towards them and their forces that they had at the time so you've got the toldy light tank the turin tank the nimrod self-propelled anti-aircraft gun the kasaba armored car and the zerini assault gun platoon very cool i don't obviously i don't know why you're speaking like a soviet but there you go <laughs> no idea yeah uh, it works, I, be, I say i on count <laughs> yeah uh, and then you've got the rifle platoon down there as well if you want some infantry in the mix all very good. A lot of this is building off the Hungarian starter force that came out, well, sort of now-ish. Uh, so if you're interested in picking that up, this will kind of give you a whole bunch of additional extras to that as well. Mm. Um, in addition to the model packs, uh, they're also going to be doing what's called the Hungarian Steel Supplement. Oof. 
Um, so this is a supplement, a little bit like what they did for the Finns with White Death, which will basically give you everything you need to know about playing the Hungarians during that 1942 to 1943 period, the sort of mid-war. Um, so it's got a whole bunch of stuff in there for very making very, very themed forces. It's bundled in with the unit and command cards for this as well. So if you're really into playing as kind of like one of these Axis allies, as they've labeled them, uh, then you can dive in and play as the Hungarians. Hmm. It all looks very as, cool. Uh, as the I'm, Germans historically called them, the, the minor Axis powers. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and if you're interested in this kind of thing, uh, then we've got some awesome Flames of War content that's gone up recently and that kind of thing. And also loads of additional stuff for like uh, Team Yankee and everything too. So make sure you can check that out because Battlefront are doing some Boku stuff recently. Hmm. It's fascinating that they're going that way because <laughs> Hungarian steel is mid-war. Mm -hmm. um, those are all late war forces. Mm -hmm. So potentially then you can pick up bits and pieces like the infantry that will fit into both. And then yeah. when you're playing around with the mid-war stuff, you may find that some of these are not available. Yeah. Some of them probably uh, are. One of, the, one of the other things I think uh, I was reading about this when it first came out, and you guys can correct me, but the Hung a lot of these Axis allies forces ended up well, they were originally obviously part of the Axis forces and the Germans, mm -hmm. but then as the war went on, obviously things didn't go too well, <laughs> and they ended up often sort of fighting on the other side. I think is the is the is the case for most of these. I think uh, a few of them did, didn't yeah. they? Jerry? Yeah, a few of them did. Uh, Hungary's one of the few that didn't so much. Um, everybody talks about the race to Berlin. There was an equal race um, for Hungary um, simply because uh, Budapest was one of the last holdouts and it wasn't a puppet government it was an actual allied government mm. uh, but they also had the only remaining oil fields inside hungary so hitler pulled people away from stopping the soviets in the north and pushed them into hungary to try and reach budapest at the same time the the russians the soviets were coming in to try and take it because there was almost an idea that stalin was going well this is late war this is the the end game when we come to carve up Europe afterwards, he wanted to be as far forward as possible to take it. <laughs> so yep. there was a there was a big rush for the capital, um, and people kind of forget about that because so much focus goes on Berlin around the same time. But um, whole whole divisions of um, Panthers were pushed into the south, so it became a, a very very bloody battle, especially mm. around uh, Fortress Budapest, where you right. had uh, like yeah. a hundred day siege of the capital around because they had a the capital was built around hills with uh, an old castle at the, the top, like a wedding cake. So you have these very very difficult street to street fighting, and then a siege at the end of it as well. So it's it's a fascinating little miniature part of the border to focus in on and, and the hungarian um defense was uh very very stoic and bloody sort of foot by foot they went back um so yeah it's it's a an interesting interesting power very cool. to use yeah. uh, and mid-war obviously changes up slightly what you're going to have in there you're probably not going to well, you will not see Panthers because they only got shunted in later on. But <laughs> I like mid-war no. and early war simply because you don't have the the big cats and the big tanks that sort of overpower the battlefield. And I think things like uh, Flames of War really shine when you've got armoured vehicles that are comparatively equal. Um, yep. Or if they're not equal, if they are super armoured, then they're slow. Uh, so they're not mm. just doing donuts around everybody. So you've got, <laughs> you've got a, a more equitable balance within your yeah. forces for mid yeah. and, and early so yeah it, it's nice that they've got both going on there you can play your mid-war games or you can play the the final defense um mm. because i haven't seen what book the hungarians are in if they're not already in one in the axis yeah. allies book they're in the axis so, ally book yeah. for um, john scott it Look. john showing it off for us it, yeah. it, it helps to have my old friends Ray Wolf up there, <laughs> which has got them for the version three but i haven't picked up mm. version four yet for the uh yeah. the late war stuff but yeah terrific yeah. stuff from battlefront Absolutely. very much so mm. yeah where to next then ben so uh after doing some kind of sci-fi grimdark stuff and mm -hmm. mortal realms and then doing some historical we're heading to the world of comic books uh because atomic <laughs> mass games <laughs> are continuing to show off some awesome miniatures uh from marvel crisis protocol uh so got two new reveals that came up over the last week or so for moon knight 
mm-hmm. and Blade. Uh, so for anyone who's not familiar with Moon Knight, and I very much wasn't, and we'll probably get some of this wrong, but he's essentially, as Wiki told me, the Batman <laughs> of uh, the Marvel Universe, although very different in many regards, uh, namely that he has a split personality, uh, and he was gifted some power originally by an Egyptian god, although now he probably doesn't have superpowers, or does he? Da, 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 da. It, 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 <laughs> depends they, it depends where they draw him. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because like a lot of things with, with comics, um, things get constantly retconned and reinvented over time. Mm-hmm. So uh, Moon Knight started as a mercenary um, who then got powers from a god. The new version of him, if they pull it from that, he's still got those, but then you've still got at the same time the idea that he may not actually have been gifted powers by God at all. He may yep. just be completely insane because he has these <laughs> multiple, multiple personalities. Yeah. Um, but it developed over time. And then the, the third one is there's a, a set of books out where he didn't get his powers from an Egyptian God. He got them from a Cthulhu-esque Outer oh. elder god, like okay. um, if if people have seen One Division, uh, they talk about Cthon uh, uh, in that one. Oh yeah, who, yeah. who give her the chaos power? It's another one of that realm of of gods, right? Or, like, you know, uh, Dormammu, yeah. that type of thing. So he got it from that god, uh, using him as his avatar on on Earth. So there there are multiple ways they could do it. The the split personality thing is fascinating as well. If they tie that into his gameplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that'd could be cool. Be. Because yeah. generally, what happens is whenever he's starting to sort of run out of steam as one personality, he just lets another one take command, and then it's almost mm. like, yeah, you know, you, you may have knocked Tar out of Mark there, but you haven't hurt me at all. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and then it's a weird, weird way of. of combining all these various aspects. Very much. I, I think someone was saying in the comments that that's the outfit that he wears in kind of like the original incarnation of Moon Knight. So it's not the sort of more modern take on him, which a lot of people were saying, oh, it'd be nice to see that. Uh, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what they do for the new Disney Plus series with Oscar Isaac. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, very cool. And then, of course, you've got Blade, uh, everyone's favourite vampire hunter, mm. uh, <laughs> in That's the so most cool. 2000s way possible, um, <laughs> yeah, <it laughs> diving is, in to it? slice things up to uh, new metal uh, and, and all sorts of amazing soundtracks uh really cool sculpt here i love that kind of like descending into a nest of creepy vampires and stuff mm. to k- kick ass with those katana very very cool and as jerry was pointing out to me very much a wesley snipes version of uh, blade <laughs> um, uh, but yeah very awesome indeed uh again going to be played on screen for the marvel cinematic universe mm. by maharala maharala ali i think i got it right man God Other you than me. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Very, very cool. Can't see what happens with that. I really hope Wesley Snipes has a cameo in that movie. You know? They oh, haven't I said know. yet whether or not any vampires are going to be attempting to ice skate uphill, have they? <laughs> <laughs> Man, the, I need to watch those films again. From the dive there. Well, <laughs> uh, lest we forget, if it was not for Mr. Snipes, we would not have anything today. Very um, true. Because Marvel yeah. were almost bankrupt until they did that and it brought all the money in. Yeah. So, Not yeah. films. They were good yeah. films, though, weren't yeah. Yeah, yeah, fantastic I stuff. I, mm-hmm. Interesting to see where Marvel Crisis Protocol goes next because they just keep pulling from various various yeah. books and various aspects and yeah. sort of expanding what they have as well. Well, so. they expanded on the X-Men quite recently, and I think those sets are coming out mm-hmm. fairly soon for Jean Grey and Omega Red, I think, as yeah. well, nice. which is pretty cool. Obviously, means we might see Phoenix at some point, which would be pretty cool to see, yeah. um, and maybe a bit more of their kind of X-Men thing as well down the mm-hmm. line. That would be pretty cool. So yeah, very nice. I'm all for all of that. Mm. Yes. So what's our last piece of news then? So we cap off with something that Jerry was very excited about at the start of the week. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kings of War is getting a global campaign very soon at the end of mm. August. End of but August. in preparation for that, maybe you want to make yourself a new army. Maybe you want to go for salamanders. Well, here they are. There's going to be a whole host of releases pardon me for the salamanders that was some of the fire getting stuck in my throat from the salamander breath uh, uh, coming up so you're going to have a salamander army which is a sort of nice entry point you've got the salamander mega army 
which takes mm-hmm. things to the yeah, level. Yeah. And then a whole bunch of additional regiments is up. So you've got the Tyrant Regiment, which I think is possibly one of the coolest kits within this selection mm-hmm. of uh, releases. Nice, cool, Very yeah. nice. Uh, there's also the Rhinosaur Cavalry Regiment, <laughs> mm-hmm. which I think is cool. Um, Whoa, they're going to be he- big. Heavy chonkers, yeah. as I believe Ryan would say. Yeah. <laughs> And then we have uh, a couple of uh, sort of additional ones there. So you've got Scorch Wings as a regiment as well, going sort of like for that sort of fiery cool. lava theme for this uh, force. Mm. And then the Gekotar Skylord, which is another character you can throw yeah. in as well. Uh, and yeah, Jerry's going to probably snap all of these up. I would imagine. I, Jerry, I, really, like, I so. really will because I've got I've got a, a substantial amount of salamanders already because the plastic kit's been around for forces of nature for a while, mm. um, but I haven't really expanded on it. I love the scorch wings because all I can think of is lock scorch wings in attack position. <laughs> but yeah, so they're the expanding. Um, this is the core plastic set that they have that either makes sort of hand weapon and shield or two-handed weapon and then like some of the other releases they're doing resin parts so the uh salamander prime get nice awesome looking helmet shields and halberds to sort of pimp them up a bit then you've got the lecadons and that sort of thing coming all in resin um the salamanders are an interesting one because they they really lean into the fire yeah, uh, yeah. They, they have Fire elementals as part of their army. They also have uh, Phoenix because I've got a couple of fire chickens as well for my Sally's. Um, <laughs> and, and as they get older, they start sort of yeah. cooling down. So the young ones are very flamey and uh, sh- sharp and, and primed for the off. And then the older ones are cooling and, and getting sort of slower and uh, yes. a bit, bit more tough. Uh, think of them as lava cooling. So they have this really nice backstory where they uh, had to flee to essentially volcanoes to live when the uh, the God War kicked off. And it's it's nice to see them coming. Don't know if they'll be out in time for the... Well, <laughs> they'll be probably be out in time to get them for the campaign at the end of yeah. August, but then yeah. uh, it's whether or not I get them painted. Let's face it, it's me. <laughs> I, won't even be I was going to ask, Jerry. I've, 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 been sitting, I've been sitting on two fire chickens and a hundred odd salamanders now for about five years. Mm. So, you know, the chances, <laughs> chances of getting something and painting them in short time is another matter. Um, yeah. But yeah, it'll be, it's good to see. And uh, not the only Kings of War news nice. for the summer because we're going to get the, the halfling, the League of Rodria are going to be coming late summer, I think. So probably around the time the campaign Very comes nice. out. Yeah. If people are interested. It's cool. Tomorrow, assuming you're watching this tonight when we put it out, and if you're not watching it tonight <laughs> when we put it out and you're watching it tomorrow, then it's today or yesterday if you're getting into it on Sunday. Do the math. Uh, <laughs> Jerry, I don't know what day it is at the moment anyway. You just made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> Mantic are doing a Mantic are doing a live stream on YouTube about Kings of War, about the summer campaign, and some sneak peeks of stuff that is coming as well. So, if you are interested in your rank and file fantasy uh, for Kings, then you can have a look on the YouTube channel and see yeah. what Ronnie's going to be talking about. I'll be in the comments. I'll right. be that one over there talking. I, I will say one of the, I will say one of the one of the nice things about what we're seeing especially with the last couple of different sets of releases for the different armies. Hmm. And I think what's been happening with Kings of War and Panathor as a whole over this kind of last edition Hmm. is we've been seeing them take those morsels from previous smaller games and things like Vanguard as they develop that. Hmm. And they've gone, do people like Salamanders? Yes, they do. Ooh, people like that hero. Let's make a war band. And then yeah. you go from the war band and they're like, let's make an army. So it's been really nice seeing that evolution between all of that. Yeah. And I also really think that, the, and because oftentimes I'm quite harsh on Mantic, especially for some of their older sculpts. Mm. But I think a lot of this new stuff is really nice. Um, uh, and, and I think they've really stepped up. And I think their monsters and characters in particular are awesome. I think they look yep. really, really cool. Uh, and for an entire army, effectively, of monsters, <laughs> yeah. I think those looks really cool. And th- that's why I've always been drawn to the ogres. I really like that ogre, I like the ogre sculpts. I think they're amazing. Uh, the the so, new yeah. stuff, even, <laughs> even a vanguard warband of ogres using their new stuff is particularly good because there's some beautiful yeah. resins in there. But yeah, um, I could talk about Mantic and Kings of War all day. <laughs> and on Saturday, you'll see that if you're on the chat on YouTube. But... That's us for the news. We're going to be right back to take a look at what people have been up to during our Spring Clean Challenge. Did you win one of our prizes? Find out on our prize claim centre over at ontabletop.com. Here we list all our previous prizes and those who have won. 
If you see your username, fill out the form to claim your prize. All prizes must be claimed within 30 days. All right, then we are back and we're going to be taking a look at what people have been up to for our spring clean challenge. Mm. So if you're not aware, every year for the last, I want to say three years at least. I think three. Since recorded history. Since recorded, <laughs> since, since the recorded history that we're choosing to focus on, uh, we've run a spring clean challenge from the start of spring to the end of spring, uh, where people can dust off projects that have maybe been lying discarded somewhere. Uh, no idea what that means. Or uh, revamp something that was finished in the past, and then they decided maybe now is a good time to go back with some new skills and techniques they have to sort of spruce it up a bit. So it's really just a chance to kick back for a couple of months and just sedately finish some stuff, which I've heard is a thing that people do. <laughs> well, yeah, finish things. Yeah, yeah. Never no, heard why? of that. No. Uh, no uh, so side eye looks at painting table. <laughs> <laughs> we have a uh, a project system, and people could enter by just going to the project system and uh, tagging their projects as Spring Clean Challenge candidates. And when we hit the end of it uh, last week, actually the start of this week was the end of spring, uh, I then trawled through entries in there to see what ones applied to this year, uh, what ones didn't, um, which ones I thought was best to get a short list. And now we're going to take you through essentially our top contenders for each of the four categories, which is Otter Pups, so our youngsters, uh, best tutorial, best execution, and best idea. Mm -hmm. There may not be the order in which we actually look at them, but you know, you, you get the idea behind it. <laughs> Project system on, on tabletop. You can come here and you can have a look at people's work based on, well, any of these filters. You can just troll through them anyway, but if you come into here and go to sprinkling challenge you'll see there were 264 not all of them are from this year some of them actually are from last year but then they came back and updated and reinvented and nice. kept, going, you know, kept going so it's not something that has to be one year only you can keep working on it lupa for example started his last year and then put nothing in it and then came back and went yeah let's go nuts so <laughs> you've, you've got uh, seven seven pages of projects that you can sort of troll through and have a look and see what people have been up to but uh, here are our favorites and also the winners so we're going to kick things off with the otter pups of the young bloods people who were 16 or, or younger uh, on the cusp of their journey probably haven't built up a huge amount of stuff in the background um to be looking at but we, we had a few entries in here first off is mini laughing boy uh, so some people <laughs> may be aware of laughing boy one of our long-term uh, uh i was going to say collaborators but he's, you know, he's community, community, community members, members. Yeah. yeah um and his son has been working on some drunken venom throops and it was quite nice to see how he's progressed from where he sort of started getting stuck into it. He's also, I think, started his own little YouTube channel as well at one point Maybe. along the way. Mm -hmm. So um, this was just working on some Venom Throops and obviously Laughing Boy Senior has been giving him some hints and tips on how he can get the best out of what he was painting up. Uh, it helps that he already had a color scheme and an idea for what he was working on because yeah, yeah. as you can yeah. see, He's already started some stuff. Amazing. <laughs> so the uh, the Venom Throops are sort of the latest and long line of getting his own army painted. And I have to say, when I was his age, I had a painted army. Mine was not as good as this. <laughs> the last time I had a painted army. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was not as good as, as that yeah. any stretch. Yeah. Um, so it's just nice to see somebody who's... Sure. At, at that, I'm going to say at that, cusp where they're quite content to plow on and work away themselves and get mm. uh get the work done to actually have their own painted army that they've done independent themselves. Like, yeah yeah so what what i like about this is that he's not going mad with the amount of paints he's using no he's keeping it simple and he's just it's block painting with with a few washes and stuff i mean you, you don't need much more than that for an no. army yeah, it's simple techniques, which is a great yeah. way to do it, when, especially when you're trying to get an army finished and you're just uh, starting off. So, yeah, well done to Mini Laughing Boy. Mm -hmm. I was going to say as well, a nice thing when it comes to pretty much all Tyranid stuff, mm. they work really, really well with, and you can see it here, shades, contrasts, yeah. and that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, it makes those models 
easier to paint because they're quite gribbly, mm. uh, uh, but also very, very cool when mm -hmm. they're finished. Yeah. So moving on and talking about getting the techniques down young. <laughs> <laughs> this on. is My our youngest. Gonna just go my heart's just gonna <laughs> soon. i can't even do it <laughs> uh, so i think i know we've looked at this previously on um yeah it was a little bit of a spring cleaning was, preview yeah, it was, yeah. We, we, when we were just looking through what people were up to uh but this is danny 76's uh no i'm assuming danny 76 is the community member and this is his son mm -hmm. uh, rather than having started his own but he's six <laughs> years old and he's been painting up some wolves uh, this is essentially his first painting project Incredible. Uh, so he got the chance to pick through uh the collection to see what was actually going to be worked on and he picked these wolves from super dungeon explorer is that mm -hmm. dead no it's not it's there you see the 404 and thought mm, oh that's yeah that doesn't exist <laughs> so he picked these picked these wolves and uh and then has spent some time learning how to do things like base coating Mm -hmm. uh learning how to dry brush learning how to sort of shade and wash so it's a, a smaller project the execution is quite nice because it's just a, a case of of getting the first steps into the hobby yeah yeah when you get a chance to sit down uh with mum or dad and splatter some paint onto things mm -hmm. and i was quite impressed by a the fact that he stuck with it and got some bits and pieces For done sure. because at that age the idea of being able to run off and do something different two minutes after <laughs> the model has been primed is probably very very, very high <laughs> um but yeah I, I suppose it's one of these sort of family moments you can sit down with mom and dad and, mm -hmm. and do some hobby um even got a chance to do some washes so it, it is the very very beginnings of a hobbyist and it's mm. you know it's like smoking you hook them while they're young <laughs> Oh, yeah. This is just his origin story we've got yeah. here. That's it, yeah. Also, dry brushing is a technique that I still use now. So, you know. <laughs> well, it's it's a great. staple. It's yeah. a staple. Yeah. If, he can, if he can get it down now, like, mm. he's going to be great at it later. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and, and the fact it wasn't just all block colour. So you see there the sort of lighter tone legs. Mm. Yeah. 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 Nice he's he's, kind of like he's trying together. to vary it. Yeah. Mm. So I, cool. I, I really like that. It was just yeah. a nice sort of first steps into the hobby from either Danny or Danny's son could go either way. <laughs> Maybe Danny's son's called Danny. Could be a Danny Jr. But regardless, <laughs> excelente. Really yeah. liked it. Really. And then we had uh, Blue Patchy with some Seraphon. Mm -hmm. And these remind me more of my first steps in painting, which is I've seen a picture, possibly in a white dwarf. And, uh, I've attempted to replicate it in some fashion and that fashion may or may not be the same way that the painter originally did it. So got a nice little setup. Nice. We have all the Funko Pops in the world in the background. Oh yeah. <laughs> there's also an R2 back there. Yeah, I was going to say, there's an R2 there, yeah. <laughs> well, there's an astromech of some description. It could be an R4, it depends on the head, yeah. <laughs> we, don't, we don't know. Tell us. <laughs> no, no judgment here. Uh, but a little Seraphon set up for Age of Sigmar. Um, oh, so. A couple of different models to be played with, including a a nice sort of. Uh, skink, I'm going to say I'm going to say bomb carrying because no, I'm going to go out and limb and say somebody's helped with the grinning face on that stone that's about to be dropped. Um, although maybe not nine years old, it's not difficult to do. But we we get a bit of an idea of where they're going with mm -hmm. it, and it's it's the sort of. The transitions aren't there yet, but they know where they want to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's, it's getting the paint on the model, yeah. and it's just a case of sticking with it, really. So he's tidier than I was when I was that age. Nine, nine years old is pretty damn good to be doing um, something like amazing, that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's what my twelve-year-old self was doing. So, <laughs> Do you know, at at nine, I was still using Humbrol enamel paints without thinner. I, did, I didn't even know what thinner was. I was just slapping it on. Slap it on. And then two days later, you're going, why is this brush solid? Yeah. So so why am I buying new brushes every day? I, th I think what's quite nice about this when you look at it is that you can see that there's obviously that knowledge of like 
where color should be yeah. like, not just slapping things on it's like i want to have a fade from like blue to dark blue i want to yeah. play with some yeah. reds i want to play with gold i want to do metallics that kind of thing yeah uh, you know even you know attempting to paint the eyes as well which i would never have attempted when i was no i scare me weirdly i did but you know that internet meme of that space marine so oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 several of them looked like him so, yeah overall it was, it's really nice to see now we, we only had a few like i said we only had a few entries Pups. for the the pups i um, still don't paint eyes but they were they neither were great do to I, see John. neither do i i've not even attempted it and i don't intend on doing it either. Uh, <laughs> only paint eyes on things that people are going to pick up and look at like characters that's the way it yep. goes but we have a winner and our winner mm-hmm. is millie clarissa pierce yeah. who uh decided to work on some stormcast eternals so we've got a mm. i want to say it was a three miniature box set uh, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's the, 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 the little paint set. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, oh, it's the paint set. So it's the the whole kit and caboodle. Nice, yeah. And we get the whole thing from being forced to sit down and start gluing and priming as <laughs> as dad's dad's sweat shop begins. Um, <laughs> you've got to you've got to teach them. I mean, if nothing else, at least you get built armies. Um, mm. But also, we get the priming and then uh, into the actual painting steps. And throughout this. Obviously, it's being catalogued um, by, well, in this case, Spee catalogued it all. So we get some nice pictures of, of what she was up to. But she gets the process from start to finish herself. So it's here's how you build a model and then yeah. you know, build the models. And then here's how you prime mm-hmm. the model. So it's not like I'm going to hand you over the box of built and prime models and just let you splash paint on them, um, which is probably the best way to do it when somebody's learning from scratch. Mm. Uh, is to take them through it and let them follow and she used the painting guide from Amazing. the paint set to actually get all the way through and and you know follow along the the sort of you can paint in three easy steps and 17 hard ones from the painting, <laughs> the painting guide in the box this the, this this is the value of having boxes like that in existence mm. doesn't matter mm. what company does them is the fact that you can take your your son or your daughter and just yeah. say do you want to have a go at the hobby that I love? And mm-hmm. here's the complete way of doing it. And mm-hmm. she's learning best practice straight out of the box. Yeah, with, yeah I agree. The priming and she's, you know, they're making sure she's wearing a respirator and stuff and being mm-hmm. careful wearing gloves, you know, and the results are speaking for themselves in the pictures. Absolutely. You know, that mm-hmm. is some very, Stunning. very tidy work. Yeah. Yeah. She makes it yeah. look easy, doesn't she? She does. It's I'm a shine. bit annoyed at that. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a natural talent, Millie. Very much mm. so a natural mm. talent. I really I hope to see more coming up from her um, her projects mm. because it's just, it's great to see. And it's great to see, just as you said, the start to finish process and how she's gone about it. And she looks so comfortable and natural doing it as well and looks like she's really enjoying it. So I really enjoyed this project. Mm. Yeah. It was nice to see a fully completed one as well, be it ever so self-contained. You know, it only ever was going to be these three models from the paint set, but we got to we got to see it from start to finish, which is yeah. sort of one of the standout yeah. bits for me. Um, as much as as I like all the other ones as well, just because they're they're getting involved and getting uh, their first steps. Or in the case of Mini Laughing Boy, he's just adding to an army that that exists, and he's he's powering through to try and get that to completion. Yeah. Um, but this one, it was just those initial steps all the way through, and even um she's using var- an airbrush using an airbrush to do a varnish at the end i mean i had an airbrush for i'm gonna say four maybe five years before i really got comfortable using it mm-hmm. um and three years in the middle of that was me not touching it at all it just <laughs> on the ground because i got it sprayed everything clogged it all up yeah got fed up with it and then walked away but you know it's it's learning the processes and learning how to use the tools you have and at the end we have things like the lloyd shot um, perfect which you know is obviously very important to all of us because mm-hmm. we don't have a good lloyd shot what have you got and what we've done there are obviously there's going to be room for improvement you know you've got some overpainting places but that has to be expected and even today i splatter paint everywhere it shouldn't be as well as where it should be so you know <laughs> it's 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 the, steps it's the, steps the, along the way the important thing I would take away from this is that she's learning best practice. She's, yep. she's working on something that is giving her a tangible end result that she can hold mm. and she can be proud of. Yeah. And 
the the quality of the finish on the individual miniature if she was to make an army like that you wouldn't oh, yeah. care yeah. that no. would look fantastic on the table as a, as a big group together sitting yep. on the table for her first game that would be amazing yeah very much so, so yeah. like i say a well-deserved winner there yes. um and definitely one that people should uh should look at and think i'm sitting with unpainted miniatures <laughs> And there's a child, I have children. There's a child there doing this. I mean, I'm not saying you definitely should press gang them in there. It's not sweatshop labor if they're your own kith and kin, because I'm pretty <laughs> certain what we should be taking away from it. <laughs> yep. So those were our paps. So four four fantastic entries and uh, an excellent winner. They're all winners in a way, but mm. only one of them actually gets the win, unfortunately. So in this case, it's Millie. Well so done, Millie. Think. Moving on yeah. from there, we have our best idea. So our ideas didn't need to be um, well executed or even finished. It just needed to be the, the seed, the nugget, the whole uh, general premise of your project. And that's what we were looking for. And uh, we've got four very different, mm, yeah. quite, quite a few very different ones for the best idea. And a lot of these projects could sort of float between both of them. But in this case, I have uh, Apple Mac. Um, so he decided he was going to do train boards for this one. Mm. Um, I'm actually going to give everybody sort of motion sickness and jump to the floor. <laughs> Save yeah, the I'm sure you all like that. Uh, so previously, I mean, I think last year, Apple Mac more or less painted some 40 year old lead figures from uh, war games foundry as part of his sprinkling challenge to get a couple of e uh, ecw armies done but he decided this time around he was going to work on a complete board system a modular system for gaming and display um, and came up with some very elaborate sort of ideas behind uh, how he was going to build the board what he wanted to see on it cliffs beaches you know the the sort of entry points and how it would impact when he was actually playing if he was using these sections so yeah it's not just a, a case of i'll stick this down it doesn't matter game wise because if you're playing it needs to be a playable board as well um, mm. which is something people often fall into the trap getting that that um dividing line between a nice looking table to play on and a table that is playable can yeah. I can I can I make a contrast here of you know do You're you want say forty k board aren't you no do you want a a Warren table oh, that's yeah, going well, to look go. absolutely fantastic or do you want a Justin table that's two hills in a forest yeah. <laughs> just gets in the way of the units <laughs> just, <laughs> I need room to play I need room I, I also wanted to I also wanted to say I love that there's a distinction between a formal river and an yes. informal river oh yeah a formal river <laughs> also known that, as yeah. a, a canal <laughs> I, I would like to say no I, for a long time i thought apple mac was actually english because of some of the things he said and some of the stuff he owned but i'd noticed in one of one of his updates or possibly one of his other projects because i follow multiple projects of it if anybody knows me i follow a lot of projects in the project mm -hmm. system anyway uh he's actually macedonian Oh, okay. So okay. it may just be an English translation thing going on there. So that's okay. that's it. But so I'm going to say a formal river formal is river. now a definitely river a canal. Is, is a, is I'm a going river. for a formal river walk. <laughs> <laughs> and this was one that could have almost dropped into tutorial. And like I say, these things cover multiple places. So you get an idea where, okay, I want these hills to be in these certain places. I want to, these are where my cutaways are going to be. But what if I actually put some of the scenery and terrain I'm going to be using down on them? Um, how will that change things up? At that point, you're going, well, maybe this hill encroaches too much and I need to push it back further Mind or him. change the slope. So <clears throat> even these simple sort of steps as he was going through um, were very, very worthwhile before he even gets into the whole rigmarole of landscaping. And it's all catalogued in there so you can see if you're starting to want to cut bits and pieces into uh, uh, into polystyrene or into xps or high density how you can go about doing it and how you can go about building up specific things so um there was scenery to go with this board it wasn't just the board itself which is another nice thing um because he he tied it into a very samurai theme for uh test of honor and i think Bushido as well very so cool we got these yeah. very nice buildings coming in so it's not just the board but we've also got terrain as well mm. 
I will skip on a little There's bit. There's a lot of work gone into this, isn't oh, yeah, it? It's yeah, unbelievable. Some superb work in here, uh, especially when you come to actually putting the building together and even doing things like, uh, I was going to say laminating, but not. He actually used uh, wood to make the wood floor. Wow. By cutting wood. Yeah. that's that's the way to do it and things like that so you can get some great techniques and tips from Definitely. people that you wouldn't ordinarily think about like getting your hands on right. either uh, thin wood or veneer and then cropping that down to make your planking or make your wood floor it's it's all very good because it's all the stuff that i would be too lazy to do <laughs> but someone has clearly put the time and effort into it, effort into it and it looks awesome so yeah mm. you two can live vicariously through this was I one can. of the, the nice like, things i built an amazing board end. oh wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> was uh even this because uh, I, I know various ways you can make rock faces but this idea of layering tin foil yeah layer of tin foil pv glue layer of tin foil and then crumple it slightly so you have a texture and then that becomes your mold so you, there mm. are companies that sell rock face molds things like woodland scenics they're not cheap um and if you're not going to be using them all the time they may be a little bit too expensive mm. but using layers of tinfoil to build your own mold. Very cool idea. That, you can that is very clever. And even though in this instance it didn't, oh, wrong way, it didn't quite work, it broke apart when he was taken out, um, it didn't matter because the rock face itself then could be reconstructed. Yeah. Very cool. Using those broken pieces. It's got to go into a backing thing, yeah. backing piece anyway. So yeah. yeah. So that, that that's a really nice technique that can be used for uh, any of us who are doing any sort of table builds or dioramas. Uh, I've used tin cool. foil for rocks in the past. I've never used tin foil to form a mold, so yeah. I really liked Applejack's work there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have a very different one, which was Corax Cox right. doing a Necromunda slash Gene Stealer slash 40K slash Mad Max build, um, which was just madness Everything in the in that very best way. Everything in that description was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not just a case of, I want to do this war band. Um, it was cool. the, the build and the execution therein as well. So using things like rotary saws. saw discs from a Dremel to make your massive rotary saws that you would That's use to carve cool. for people. Um, Actually deadly miniatures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then I imagine that that blood splatter effect is not blood for the blood game, <laughs> may have actually come via oh, well. medium of, uh, <laughs> yeah. attempting attempting yeah. to clean that up yeah um so so these were these were beautiful but it was the concept because the concept was very much mad max meets john blanche yeah and throughout this you see that coming through in in a massive massive way um i have a couple of john blanche art books and he has a very distinctive style for yeah. his 40k illustrations so much so that many people have copied it and even a whole painting genre has sprung up around blanchitsu yeah. yeah. uh, name i was gonna say bless you there named after his, <laughs> but it was named after his old he used to do a white dwarf painting article That's series cool. back in the day um but it was these parts here where he added static grass tufts and fake eyelashes to make these over the top that's awesome. Um, That's a brilliant idea. That yeah, wow. and that that touch of genius right there is why this dropped into the idea. Because oh my god, uh, you put static. I mean, everybody has static graph tufts these days. They're just so much easier than having to do it yourself. So we're all very lazy. But you always think of them as being stuck on a base, never mm. as being stuck on a model in no. placement of fur. And then you you just glue them on and then trim them to get this perfect furry rough mm -hmm. which is just amazing the thing that's quite like like blanche's artwork is obviously mm. very sketch concept based yes mm. and so he has those very like extended ink lines mm. very th yes. thin lines yeah. and so this perfectly mirrors that which I think is really awesome to see. And and as you can see, it comes together really nicely. And I also yeah. like that the color tones are very similar to Blanche mm. and artwork. So you've got the reds and the oranges and the yellows, which is the kind of overall look that you tend to get with a lot of the Blanche um, artwork. So, yeah. yeah. And, and the Mohawk on a, a astronaut's helmet is particularly good. Mm. I mean, you know, why would you not have that? He's, he is one step away from For Mad Max. Taking over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, was, I was blown away by the whole concept Absolutely. behind it. Absolutely. 
Really cool concept. I think, honestly, you've blown my mind with the eyelashes. I've got loads sitting there, which I'm yeah. going to get into my miniatures. Me too. Thank you. I was just thinking this is just great. Hey, we've <laughs> we've done nail wondering. art. Next up is the only thing eyelash. I was wondering oh, yeah. is, is once I take them off, instead of throwing them in the bin, can I then recycle them? <laughs> no, but then you've got the mascara to kind of uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a whole yeah, messy yeah. thing. But yeah, so Corax Cox's um, Blanche Mad Max effects was just it was just Brilliant. seminal seminal idea and one that I will be stealing mm. wholesale for uh, in the future. So moving on, then we have the Victorian Docklands from Antiquitatis, mm. which again was another board build, um, although it wasn't the board build itself that drew me to this one. Now, unfortunately, it kind of came and went, but then the fact that it's the idea is what I was after, not mm -hmm. the actual completion. Mm. I I didn't mind that, you know, it, it went away, but it was a steampunk was, board. I was going to say, some, someone said that it's run out of steampunk. Oh, oh. Yeah. They want you to sit there, Ben. <laughs> I'll, I'll go. <laughs> but uh, doing, some, doing some work for, uh, I believe, Volsung mm -hmm. and Rear, so really leaning into the steampunk feel and wanted to have this uh, this big Victorian dock effect, um, but also have the dock be moving. So we have oh, this gear. Oh, cool. That's so actually, cool. Actually works. Um, so it was part and part and parcel of that drew me in here. We have the, the lifting gear itself was built, even though the the rest of the the board hasn't been finished yet. I'm just going to say yet, because there's always time to go back to it. But it was just that that idea of how do you make a steampunk board that stands yeah. out and yeah. being able to have the the actual bridge open and close means you can actually change not just the the layer of the board, but you can change how the board actually plays yeah. interactive raising, tabletops yeah. Yeah. just mm. by raising that bridge all of a sudden changes things uh, and could even be used within game itself mm -hmm. um, you can suddenly just sort of pop this up and then your opponent has to deal with the fact that that's no longer going so there there's a lot more planned in between the <laughs> between the bridge itself with the lights and all the rest and um, there have been some call outs if people can help with the planning of the uh circuitry as well so mm. i know some people like blinky is big into his uh his oh, circuits yeah. uh i looked at that and went yeah yeah that's all fine mate yeah you go ahead. <laughs> you, so you just, it's uh, high techy techy yeah, that one where it says m yeah that's i would definitely have that as an m <laughs> thought about possibly having a like a cure p at one stage and then said no no m m is the way to go i've actually seen a few more people doing um electronic based stuff um, mm -hmm. Recently, a couple more people putting lights That's in things, cool. uh, which, yeah. is, which is always cool. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There have been some great projects recently. Um, there's a creepy puppet on a yeah, yeah. yeah. from Blinky, actually, within the project system that people yeah. really need to see. But uh, yeah, even though he never got the, the whole project finished yet from Antiquitatis, I think it was a, a Very great cool idea. idea. Yeah. And it shows exactly the sort of things that you can you can get into when you start thinking outside the box for so. sure i mean this isn't this is just on another level for me because when you think about making a gaming board i think there it's like oh yeah i have a nice little building here when you think about things moving hmm. it changes literally changes the game doesn't it yep oh yeah really yeah. really out of the box Brilliant. very much so and so that brings us to our winner for best idea <laughs> and this is illidan who took a toy heli carrier. Unfortunately, Captain America doesn't get to stay on it. <laughs> but the toy heli carrier with the addition of some 3D printed parts to wow. become a beast of a gaming table, I'm going to say. Okay. Um, because here you see it's not just the tiny chassis that he originally stayed with, but he built a whole running section below it, uh, which has all been done via the medium of 3D printing. Uh, and you can kind of see the scale later on. Wow. Uh, he has to put it all together and then put it on a stool and walk away to take a picture because it's too big to fit <laughs> in ordinarily. So it, it doesn't just become a piece of terrain. It possibly becomes the board in question. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this was just superb. Uh, now, no working motors in this one yet 
Um, because if it actually flies, that'll be amazing. Oh, yeah. point. <laughs> Get we'd some all, drone parts in there. We'd all be very keen to see that. Yeah. Um, but what he has done is all of these sort of sections of the lower hull have been magnetized um, so that it can be swapped out and then Wild. more 40K apparent sections can be swapped in so he can play it in the grim dark with lots of flying buttresses and skulls nice. or he can go back for a more pulpy uh, mm. marvel crisis protocol type game or something oh, you yeah. could actually show yeah. hulk running through the bowels the of the helicarrier yeah. cool. uh, and that is is what sort of blew me away when he got into it so you can see the sort of size that you're dealing with here when you're looking at abc warriors very very far away um so you can have your dread like thing and I, I, awesome. those baggy pants look like they may be almost <laughs> infinity based ones but anyway you know it's difficult to say baggy pants <laughs> but i was Down really yeah. <laughs> i was really enjoying watching all of this come together and then he was going you know what would be good oh. Oh. <laughs> lighting would That's be a good no idea. Way. like i say we haven't seen a motor yet on the ramp yet yet but <laughs> But maybe with uh, the likes of this and with the, the lit cool. interior, you can certainly reach in to play through there if you need to. Um, I imagine Hulk would pretty much fill the middle of that. Yeah. Just have you know, Natasha running away going, oh my God. Hulk <laughs> yeah. no smash. Hulk no smash in there <laughs> it's a way to go. So he didn't get the 40K side started yet, um, but he did at least complete this section of it yeah uh, and start to get the painting done so and I, I think it becomes a lot more coherent when you see this little toy part on the front yeah uh unfortunately captain america's ramp seat has been removed in favor of a missile launcher which Fair. probably makes slightly more sense than a giant ramp seat um, <laughs> i get it yeah you know, you know, it's, oh, it's kind of everything in life um, but it's it's a root of a of a machine it really is and it, it shows amazing. it shows just what people can come up with when they look at a toy yep. a toy that's practically flat let's face it there's not much depth to that normally mm -hmm. there's there's maybe an inch and a half maybe two inches there uh five centimeters in roman catholic um <laughs> but then you just take these massive constructs from 3d print uh to add in all of this depth and actually make it to be something more realistic yeah as far as a heli carrier goes <laughs> yeah it will be really cool to see eventually hopefully games being played on top of that i think it'd be really neat for as sure. you say using that either as the board or mm -hmm. like half of the board next to maybe like a docking yeah. station or something i really be really neat um yeah. but yeah stunning idea and i love the idea of kind of like terrain pieces on this scale yeah being used as kind of like a board in, in of themselves it's always yeah. awesome to see so. it's absolutely fantastic i mean it's not as fantastic as the greatest movie ever made but of course as, yeah. as far as ideas go, <laughs> what it is that right up there. <laughs> Oh. I I keep getting comments and and stuff and it's like oh uh, it's, him that, it's him that does it as well. <laughs> we'll we'll discuss that later on. Oh, I please? didn't know that we've seen it. God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so those were our ideas and a terrific set of ideas and so many Excellent. of them could drop between various uh, sort of categories as well. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in this case, just just I picked out a few, you know, a few little nuggets, soupçon of. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say at this halfway point, sort of as we're going through these, all of these will be linked down in yes. the description below, and also the winners will be marked as well. So mm. if you have, well, you want to dive in and learn a little bit more about each of these, definitely go and do that. Mm -hmm. and check them all out. So, oh, they're definitely worth. It. And like I say, there there's probably ones in there that could have made the cut, um, mm. but you've got to be harsh you've got to draw lines somewhere and so i <laughs> i drew lines based on me and maybe somebody else would go well you know you're terrible mccabe and i'll go yes yes i am i, know. <laughs> I mean as, as i said earlier i would rather you than me pick the r pups i'd be like just give them all a prize please uh, but just yeah. what it'd be I know. We, we toyed with that at one stage but i was repeatedly whipped <laughs> <laughs> Somebody going, do you think we're made of money? And then they just <laughs> with the bag of satsumas. It was terrible. Mm. Anyway, moving on then. Um, mm. We're going to take a look at our best skill. Yes. So our yeah. well-executed entries. Mm. Uh, and uh, there's a couple in here that may throw people off. Um, we're thinking, where is 
he coming from? But I don't think anybody's <laughs> going to be able to argue with me on our first. So Carlos Spichter um, went for a variety of things with the Spring Clean Challenge. So um, these were just attempts to get stuff together and, and finished that had been languishing <sighs> so in various places. Um, and we were kind of amazed by a lot of this. Yeah. So this is one of GW's Trogoths, yeah. Trogoth trolls, mm. and one of their Nurgle esque haunted creepy wood trees smooshed together to make a troll tree, tree troll. Yep. Um, not sure how you'd actually like to think about it. Um, possibly, <laughs> possibly not while you're sleeping anyway. <laughs> no. As it, as, it, as it grabs people and shoves them into its massive yeah, body wall. Yeah. Um, Amazing. And this. I just loved simply for the, I mean, this one could have gone into idea quite happily, um, mm. but the, the skill and the execution on this was just beautifully yeah. done. So one of the, so that you can't really tell where a tree limb ends. Not at all. Exactly. Begins. Yeah. One of the things I quite liked about this project as a whole was that it was very much, and, and all of them were definitely within the spirit of the spring clean, but this mm -hmm. one seemed very much in that wheelhouse because it was like, this is something that has sat here for two years I'm going to paint this. And yeah. there's a really nice, like, there's like, the, now I'm doing Drakari. Now I'm doing Trogos. Now mm -hmm. I'm doing Eldar. It, it, it's, uh, it's really cool seeing each of these presented in their finality like this. Uh, and it gives everybody hope that they can get through their pile of potential. Not yes. shame, potential. Yeah. So. I would say pillar of pride, but I like pile mm. of pride. Pillar of pride. <laughs> It's good. And while this one didn't contain as much in the way of tutorial yeah. um, as some of the other did, there are still interesting little bits and pieces in here. Um, so, oh, for God. example, the yeah. wood grain on the Eldar and uh, Dark Eldar machines, mm -hmm. we get to see those later on. And how it was done by, you know, you go quite harsh highlights for the uh, the, the uh, knots and the like in the wood, in the grain, and then almost varnish over the top. Uh, this... Glotkin. This, this Glotkin, Glotkin yeah, is yeah. absolutely disgusting. Mm. Way too oh, uh, oh, wow. When we say wow. look at the eyes, we're not talking about that eye. There's even we're more eyes. We're talking yeah. about. Oh, there's eyes. all the eyes. And they actually look real. They are it's... way too convincing. Yeah. That's yeah. stunning, isn't it? Mm. it? It really is. Really nice blending techniques across the whole thing as well. Yeah. Just How big is this miniature? Glockin uh, is quite big. Pretty that's a, big. That's, yeah. that's a big, chaos big. nurgly guy stood on the top of it. Yeah. yeah. And he doesn't look small either. No. So no. He, he's about 40 mil and then yeah. the whole kit and caboodle. Because it's actually three brothers, if I remember correctly. It is, yep. yeah. Wow. So, so 40 mil, 40 mil, and then that thing there is probably like 120. So maybe maybe 14 to 16 centimeters. Unbelievable. Um, but yeah. Amazing, amazing work. And one one that almost caused fist fights amongst the judging panel <laughs> <laughs> over over who was going to come in first because my god it was close and even things like having just like little pesky kids you know it's the very very big to the very very, very small mm -hmm. um, we we've seen it all in this and it was just beautifully done throughout um i'm a big fan of the purple sun Oh yeah, I've been the, for years. The base it, work is fantastic on this. It ruins well. oh, yes. many people's hobbies. Um, when you're playing on the when you're playing on the tabletop, and this just came strafing across. And Purple sun, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's beautiful base, isn't it? Yeah, but you really see the devastation left behind by the purple sun, as <gasps> in its wake, mm -hmm. and everything is sand and dust, just illuminated by its big purple ball. Uh, so cool. In front, everything's still verdant and green potentially with a high elf unit just in front of it here that you just don't see. Um, so yeah, the purple son of coronavirus coming your way. I was, <laughs> it's a I was waiting for a coronavirus joke. I was it's waiting. Superb... And that's the video demonetized. Uh, yeah. no, uh... <laughs> <laughs> they don't listen this far into it. The no. YouTube algorithm gets bored. Even, you know, even though it's an AI, <laughs> it gets bored listening to me after a while. But yeah, there was just so much to see throughout this from Carlos. And it was a, uh, Oh it was my a thing God, that Wraith Lord. Done in the style of one of the Titans as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. Style oh of a, look at an old that. Epic knight. So Centaur. I really, I, oh, he did it. Oh my God, he did. Oh, wow. Oh. I didn't yeah. realize it was a Centaur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
oh, I'm going to have to rethink my elder now. Yeah. So. <laughs> I've just done boring old I and in yellow. So <laughs> I just did orange and blue. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. There go, Jeff. Awesome stuff, though. It, awesome it was stuff. stunning from Carlos. Um, moving into a different direction. Uh, so Laughing Boy, we've seen many Laughing Boy earlier. Um, <laughs> Laughing Ooh. Boy actually preempted us by starting his spring clean challenge on the first day of spring. We only announced it a few days after the first day of spring, <laughs> but he broke, potentially knew it was coming. He decided he was going to paint the entire contents of uh, Super Fancy Super Brawl. Fancy Brawl. Yeah. yeah. So this was one where it's not technically um, as detailed as some of the others. There isn't layers of blending and painting going on. It's specifically been done for a reason. And the reason was I want my Super Fantasy Brawl to be finished mm. and i'm going to use the tools at my disposal to do this so washes and contrasts featured in quite yeah. heavily um and it all comes together to give you this incredibly <gasps> wow. characterful board beautiful all that, done dusted that is like um video game kind of stylistic it's look to it isn't it yeah um I'm trying to think of some of the video games that it even reminds me of. Got kind of like a lol Dota sort of feel to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of like all those kind of MOBAs and it's hero so shooters and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the characters are high contrast. Very paladins, <laughs> if anyone knows paladins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, is it like Gauntlet? Uh, paladins is basically knockoff Overwatch. Sorry, Paladins fans. Oh. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, but are. the thing that I really, partic- I really liked about this. Um, is obviously that start to finish mm. element to the project. But I also like that because every single character is different, that means that you have to use different techniques and different styles and different painting, mm. different paints throughout the entire process. Mm-hmm. Because what works, for example, on that rat creature there doesn't work when you come to do white on a big werewolf badass or yeah. a troll. Yeah. And obviously you use you know similar things you've learned from applying contrast paints and shades and highlights and that kind of thing. Mm. But you've really got to think about what colors you use, where you use them. Do you go completely faithful to the artwork? Do you change things up and that kind of thing? But I think that every single one of these just looks fantastic. And it's one of those things where you're like, oh my God, now I really am playing this character on the tabletop. I'm not using a plastic miniature of him. (laughs) I've actually taken that character Mm. from the artwork and used him in the game. Without a doubt. So yeah. Does he mean there's even... Um, OSL and all sorts of things in this as well. I, oh, so one of the big reasons I wanted to include this and the next one as well is because as best skill goes, I didn't want it to solely be about level of technical competence. Like a heavy metal kind yeah, of Because mm. this is yeah. not a painting competition. No. This is a sprinkling challenge and should yeah. be open to everybody regardless of mm. level they're at. Um, and, but in this instance, it was it's what they wanted to achieve and how well they've achieved it. Yes. So uh, and in that, yeah. that case, it tech, 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 it tacked some <laughs> terribly culty there. Tacked all the boxes. <laughs> it ticked all of the boxes yeah. uh, for me. So oh, I'll knock your bollocks in. <laughs> Why? <laughs> but yeah, so terrific stuff just, from uh, I, Laughing Boy, yeah. I could sit and look at all of these individually. Mm. They're so different. Each yeah. and every individual one, like you said, Ben, has got a different mm. paint the, scheme the, in general. This is, this is my so favourite. Yeah. Oh, the, that's the, beautiful. The, the, the cool thing, and probably quite horrifying to a lot of people, um, is that normally he does these during his live streams, mm. and they only last about two hours. No so way. So he probably spends about two hours doing these, and then they're done. Yeah. Which yeah. is just fantastic. Yeah. So. so it was it was terrific to see and, and the fact that it's all catalogued as well. So yeah. you, you will see occasionally a Twitch link that no longer exists in there because Twitch only stays up for eh. so but there are also yeah. YouTube yeah. um things so you can see some of the actual paintwork mm-hmm. that's gone into it. But yeah, I was just blown away by what he achieved there. So really good great, without great work, laughing boy. And then we come to Spee. So I, actually I never realized, yeah. So uh Spee's, Spee's daughter. Spee and Mini Spee? Yes, Mini Spee. <laughs> Mini, Mini Spee is, um, I believe, uh, Millie, who won the pub. No way. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. So I'll and also, Spee attention. is painting really mini miniatures. <laughs> yes, painting mini miniatures. And again, mini. this is another one where he really took Spring Clean Challenge to heart. 
and went, what have I got setting from 30-odd years ago? Oh, epic. I know. <laughs> epic. Not even the most recent epic, yeah. uh, but the oldest, latest epic that I could ever find. <laughs> and and this one blew me away for the volume he got through. Really? Because we are looking at four, maybe five full epic armies. Wow. Uh, mostly from scratch. Uh, some had been painted in the past and then had been stripped back so they could be repainted as part of this. So one of the very first entries is a bunch of squat landship parts in a bottle of Dettol, um, <laughs> which is always good to see. So you get a, as we're seeing here, the Eldar side um, with a lot of work on the super poppy, very old school colors, uh, missing the pennants from between their legs, which is a terrible shame. I think I have those in a an old white dwarf. Maybe I'll scan them in for him. Um, but also throughout it, you get the list building as well. So you're not just seeing, it's not just the painting side, it is putting these armies together to actually produce the armies. So mm. I'm going to skip on past the Eldar and we can have a look at things like chaos. So, yeah. So nice. You two can yeah. Bask in the old school glory of chaos with more little mini there. rhinos. <laughs> They're so small. Teeny, teeny. It's the, the old dreadnoughts that make me chuckle. Yeah. The old dreadnoughts are there also because those old dreadnoughts, for people who remember, came from Space Crusade, tiny. along with the chaos androids that then became the Necrons. Yep. There are also chaos androids in here. Um, oh wow! So I'm yeah. not sure. That's a lot, isn't it? This is only this is only half of one page. Unbelievable! <laughs> like I say, there are many, 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 many things in here. Like you get the trolls. There we go. There's the chaos androids. So again, for any old school space crusade players, Necrons before Necrons, Necrons before Necrons were a thing. I can't let you do that, Abaddon. Mm. <laughs> And little was, tiny, little tiny stone trolls. Aww. Yes, oh, yeah, that yeah. that pose makes me giggle. It's like that, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're all trying to do the the Egyptian dance. Right? <laughs> yeah. Lining up for a Egyptian. sumo or something. <laughs> <laughs> but this was just—it was beautiful to see. Really cool. The army yeah, building, so the list building, and the diversity because you know chaos and squats and imperial and eldar they're all very very different so you all get a, a, a very different idea of what um, you're actually seeing throughout mm. and even things like the little nurgle rhinos with the tiny nurgle symbols on them really well done yeah really well done indeed. beautiful stuff and yep. well anybody who's interested in epic definitely worth having a look at this because like i say we're not even to the end of the chaos and there's another couple of pages in there so it's the kind of stuff that'll get you hankering for more of this kind of thing mm -hmm. um, and there are people out there that do it so yeah oh very much so. check it out Grenza. Epic, <laughs> epic is going to be the uh the next big thing in a small way yeah <laughs> but we only have one winner and our best skill had to go to soup dodger for his military order spring clean for infinity nice this one boggled my mind with how in depth mm. it it went as well as the final project yeah. uh, sort of the final uh, sort of product here yeah. <laughs> so, there, there were three phases to this project making a set to take photos on which is something soap does a lot uh, mm. for various various games every time he's taking photos of a miniature he builds a set to take the photos on so they don't just sit wow. on a white background or whatever mm. it is so they're in the in the universe so he needed to have a infinity based set for them uh, update three of his models at least to different degrees and rounding his models out to a force and then he proceeded to do the most insanely detailed plan i've ever seen in my life as he built a chapel for the infinity military holy orders to actually go into um so these are his of course yeah <laughs> these are Why his not? plans for his tiles wow for the floor because sometimes yeah. you've just got to go i'm going to i'm going to make myself a whole set of tiles mm. um hands up who would have just either a cut out black and white squares or b not bothered <laughs> i certainly would not have bothered there you go <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he had these three panel figures. So John wow. Mark, uh, the Seraph Tag, and then the little ox box, box, box yeah. that he wanted to bring back up to 
sort of his modern standard of painting. Mm -hmm. To be brutally honest, I'm quite content to have left all of those at yeah. their current iteration. I yeah. see no problem with that. His no. Joan um, looks amazing. Mm. Yeah, oh, it is excellent. But <laughs> just you wait. <laughs> just you wait. So soap does have a lot of people are buying 3D printers these days. Uh, soap likes the smell of burnt MDF in the morning and has a laser cutter, um, which is something that you don't really hear much about. You don't know. Obvious having, um, but I do know you can get them. So the tile work that is going into the floor was also being used to make base toppers so the the models Clever. fit in there um and we go through the how to best sand and seal these things wow to, so that they don't uh i suppose Goodness. deconstruct when you start painting them because they can become very uh bitty as fibers sort of lose their cohesion um but we get that we guess all of the detail and attention to painting and then he decides i need these walls to look like walls how can i do this so <laughs> using pumice ak texture paint filler super glue with uh bicarb and then the last one is sand and um, pva which one looks more realistic as stone uh which is obviously the question we've all asked <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you haven't then congratulations you're not wasting the precious gift of life. <laughs> bestowed on you so you know i'm joking i'm not joking <laughs> but we get all of that uh, and then from then on it's into the build so unbelievable the holy orders there are multiples for pano uh each one gets their own stained glass window individually and, and this is this is very much one of these that could have been a tutorial could have been yeah very yeah. much so like um it was just phenomenal but you'll see what we mean by the, <laughs> by the end of this uh, but yeah, sorry, each of those stained glass windows painted up individually yeah. in incredible detail to make sure that they match the, there you go, match the yeah. different orders. Yeah, so giving it a bit of paint with various types of AK filters and the like, so you get the yeah. see-throughness of it all, and then some of the work on his sandstone, which I think is, you know, it's all That's, right for sandstone. It's, it's, yeah. pre it's pretty good sandstone. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me further. though. I think he's Scottish, which means he can always nip down to Edinburgh and see all the sandstone. So yeah, unlike the rest of us, you know, he, he's in a, a prime location to view it up close and personal. Um, there's a Jerry incredible. shot there. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your photography is terrible. Uh -huh. <laughs> but pressing on past that, uh, of which there's much in the actual painting way, let's just skip on. We get into building up the base and again there was that design all laser cut in and just need to be individually painted and when it's individually painted it kind of looks amazing i mean this is you were right ben this is thorough mm -hmm. this is mm. unbelievable i hadn't seen any of these projects until you know right now <laughs> and you're all just like wait there's more and i'm like there can't be more yeah. and then there's yeah. more what things like setting the figures in to go okay will this work yeah that that kind of works but then he's got to get to work in re repainting everything uh, what word. i will do is i will skip on some of the interim work and start to find some of the more complete pieces oh those windows look at those so there you can see how nicely his stained glass is with the various military order symbols and pano in the center there so you have your Hospitlers and Lazarus and uh, Knights of Malta and anybody else who happens to be kicking around. It's just superb, superb work. And then it's a case of now I've got to get to work updating and repainting these things. There's also a comprehensive guide on taking pictures <laughs> for anybody who, <laughs> unlike, unbelievable. anybody unlike yeah. me who isn't great at taking pictures, uh, he goes into things like shutter speed, ISO and stuff like that how to get the best out of taking your photos um but obviously i know all that already so i'm going to gloss over that anybody who's seen my photography knows that is incredible work there's the Unbelievable. Joe coming along in double quick fashion and if i just going to skip to the end and show us some of the completed stuff so there's our photography um wow and here is oh. mind blown mm. 
model painted amazingly in amazing setting. It's going to really look at heart. that. Look at the resolution. <laughs> I know. <laughs> look, I mean, so his, his, his painting's very messy on those fleur de lis there. Oh, this, yeah. this part could do with a second coat, just to <laughs> solidify that a bit. You know, he can't have everything, I suppose. <laughs> unbelievable but yeah it's it's a, a thing of a thing of absolute beauty uh up to and including the pigs yep <laughs> malifo pigs aren't they yeah they are, yeah, yeah. yeah. so dodger has actually been painting malifo recently as well so yeah. <laughs> but as you can see the whole setup and he's right taking pictures f for either your own um pleasure or for projects and having a setting for them mm. is more interesting than just having a, a generic sure. background um no i don't think i would ever go to the level of time and effort that he has to individualize all of these and bear in mind this is just for the pano military orders i've seen him do stuff for adriana and, and all sorts of things where it's very specifically a set for a faction they are in their element mm. um and just the skill and attention to detail he puts in is beyond belief. The braziers on the back, yeah. or, or braziers, um, were, yeah, because one of those is an old older holster. They were 3D designed and printed by himself. Unbelievable. So, you know, those are different and exciting and new. Well, what um, I absolutely love about this is that at, at the end of this, he's got a display for the force hmm. that looks and I'm not allowed to swear, fecking incredible. Mm. He's got something that is very much unique to what that collection is. It's in theme, it's in yep. universe. And all he needs to do is just set that on a shelf and just add some lights. And yeah. Oh. Bob the Barbarian had nothing to do with this. He Sorry. needs to he needs to put LEDs into the the windows. The, no, he needs to put LEDs into the things that I'm not going to say because I'm going to say them in the braziers. <laughs> you can put no, LEDs in your, bra in your brazier if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that got our pick for best execution. I wonder yeah. why. <laughs> no, I've just sat here like this the whole I, time. I, really I, want, I want to play the Holy Orders. And I actually want to have mm -hmm. an Infinity Collection just because mm -hmm. of this. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's a talented fella and very much up on his infinity. So Danny. I've uh, often pestered him in the past, but that is best executed. Mm. So that just leaves one us category to one go. category yeah. left. One more, and then we're all done. And our final category is best tutorial. And this was an interesting one, simply because, like you've already seen there, there's there's several very high quality entries that could have easily gone into best tutorial mm -hmm. um so sort of pegging these all back was uh an interesting conundrum i suppose for me um but i picked out a few that i think are a little bit unique a little bit different so we're not seeing the same thing the whole time and we're going to start off with raising the black flag high so a napoleonic prussian set up uh from james cuts and this was very good apart from the bike riding bit where he went outside <laughs> <laughs> how dare you go outside very much very much how dare he um <laughs> but getting into painting up uh, napoleonics can often be a bit daunting for people mm. because there's so much about the uniforms and about the two different napoleonic periods and what changes from one to another and there's a lot to invest time-wise if you're going to do something like this. Mm -hmm. um, and this was a very interesting, essentially, tutorial about building a Prussian army, uh, about how they were actually fielded and then how you would paint them to match. So here we can see the various paints that went into painting up things like the Landwehr. So those are, I think, War Games Atlantic. Um, yeah. Landwehr. So you've got various aspects within the, the Prussians that are going to be uniformed differently and behave differently on the tabletop. And uh, we got a, an excellent guide throughout this about oh. if you want to do a Prussian army, here are where the various regiments were raised from, and mm -hmm. therefore you can go, well, if I'm going to do 
so many of each or if you want to have the full order of battle um you can look at it and go well i'll grab them from there which means i need to have these regiments have these color and cuffs because the facings differentiate people in Napoleonic warfare uh, or sometimes the facings are the same and then it's cockades plumes and palms <laughs> and the course, hats yeah. change. <laughs> so you know it it can become overwhelming so a lot of the the leg work here is going into explaining this and um either showing very simplified ideas of what you should be looking at uh, or even linking back i believe he links back to yeah um a few websites that show these things and then you can go in and have a look at what you need to get and where you can get it from so there's a lot of resource went into this which is yeah one of the things i like in a tutorial if it can't cover the entirety of the subject by itself without becoming a website then having the links through to other websites to help or in some cases um books as well so we obviously drafted in things like the osprey books uh for Fantastic. specific engagement so that you can get the idea of what you need to do to build it up he's he's gone to great lengths to filter down that intimidating amount of information yeah. into something that's not yeah. as frightening to to be able to look at something and then say with confidence or relative confidence that i could paint that correctly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And this this one is just for somebody asked me a question about the uh, War Games Atlantic British uh, in a YouTube video last week. And will they match up with Perry's? Uh, now I've answered you, but as you can see here, there's War Games Atlantic's Prussians in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Perry Metal, and on this side is the Perry Plastic. So yes, they do ah. perfectly. If you were that person who asked that question, there's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else don't need to pay attention to what I've just well, said. They do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so tutorial wise uh it's superb i mean it's it's a wealth of information and it it's not about the individual paint strokes on this one it is about the what you need for this army how you can uh put the army together and actually you know, uh, get the army on the tabletop to look like it's supposed to without going into the individual washes yeah. and layers it, that detail is there but it's the the more grand aspect of the yeah. like force um which is what's being taught in this one and mm. i just thought it was fantastic very very, very well put yeah. together a very yeah. it, it's good that he doesn't go into the individual brush strokes as such yeah. because you don't need to know that if you're no. already in the hobby well enough like mm. but the the color guide is important and the the miniature comparison yes. definitely is important as well especially for things like those mm. uh, because they don't come with a command so you have to source the command from another company and while they fit perfectly with perry's if you were to put something like front rank there you'll find that they probably look like hobbits yeah. beside front yeah. rank so yeah it's it's nice to see i think so, what's really great about this one's especially is like for me personally to get into historical stuff i'm quite intimidated because my his my history is not anywhere near as you know pristine as it should be mm -hmm. um but i i certainly do not know when I get into stuff like this, this is the kind of thing that I want to see. This is the tutorial that I'd love to see because mm. it will teach me the things without me thinking, where the hell do I start? Where do I go? <laughs> what do I do? Am I getting the wrong colours? Yeah. This provides just another perspective into getting into that side of the things. Yeah. Mm. It's it's superb. And there's a, a fair few, not just James, but there's a, several uh, other very historically focused uh, community members who do some great um projects like this for various scripts and armies does some good stuff yeah scripts do some great yeah. stuff as well so not all of them appeared in the spring king challenge because they're just things they're working on anyway but mm -hmm. uh, uh fog uh, andy has some great stuff for pike and shot as well but yeah that was a superb one then moving on we have a slightly different uh kettle of fish here with henry light or henry leet henry leet <laughs> um last year he did this tramp steamer for the sprinkling challenge and this year the idea was to build a board to go with it uh, and this was again an excellent tutorial about how you can build up a setting and it wasn't just the nuts and bolts of building it um, but also various sort of examples of how you can go about putting this together and up creating the uh, MDF buildings. Uh, so when we skip further down here, you'll see things like adding tiles, using Mod Podge, removing the chain that comes with the um, crane uh, and replacing it with a bit of 
thread to make it look more like steel cable, uh, which would be more realistic for this sort of gantry crane here. Mm -hmm. um, so you get all of that, possibly not in as much detail as some of the other tutorials, but enough detail that you could follow along if you wanted to, to mm -hmm. get this for sort sure. of waterfront finish. Just gonna have to go back here because there's some interesting pieces that I really want to get to. There's Montana Gold, great spray range, by the way. <laughs> cheap, <laughs> cheap as well. Really? Yeah, about a fiver for that tin. Nice. Which is the same size as an Army Painter slash GW tin, and they come in a whole host of colors. They're used by artists and graffiti artists. Ah. Um, so yeah, Montana Gold, if you can find them in your area, get them. But adding in things like this, so oh, I like that on the window. All of the windows ended up with uh, essentially blister pack windows and yeah. then framed. And then we also have posters added um, and how to do those bits and pieces as well. Uh, if I can get way, way back, we will find him doing some work on the actual buildings. So mm. the explanation of how he's constructing them, how he's painting them and getting everything sort of together so you have this finished effect on them and like i said it's it's an excellent blend of tutorial and detail less written text and more tutorial show, yeah. yeah so show not uh, say so it's a photo gallery where you get enough uh, text to tell you what's happening and then the rest mm. of it is just step-by-step -step photos uh, which is excellent for two reasons um Henry slash Henri isn't a native English speaker. And a lot of people on the site aren't native English speakers either. So sometimes walls of text, while great for me, um, are you might. better when you just show people. Yeah. Um, so, you know, keep the explanation fairly punchy and then push on and, and actually go through the step by step. And that uh, will get the idea across a lot better for people, especially if they're trying to follow a tutorial like this. Sometimes seeing it progress works better. Unbelievable. Yeah. I love I love that whitewashed look. Yeah. Mm. On that wall. That's great. It's really nice. And especially where that is starting to sort of rub away. Mm. Yeah. As if the poster's getting older, which is something he hasn't gone to an extreme on this. But if you want an old poster, once you've got it on a wall like that, if you just take a piece of uh wire wool or very fine sandpaper mm. and literally just sand the poster back as if it's been on there for a while and started to wear off. That's a good idea. Really nice. Really nice. Mm -hmm. it's superb work. Very but good. Even even very good. that wasn't good enough. We come to the intelligent Mr. Toad, and he's been working on this wall. The of text entire area. of Stalingrad. <laughs> yeah. wall of text says that he wants to do a big mega battle of Stalingrad, uh, and was starting pretty much from scratch. So again, it's a comprehensive. This is page one of I think three, um, using things like um, I was going to say Little Big Man Studio, but it's not. Things from the basement, yeah, of yeah. house building, yeah, um, which. You can either get unpainted or foreground do a pre-primed colored version, um, depending on which side of the ocean you're on. So if you're in America, you can just get it from things in the basement direct and it'll just be flat MDF. So he's gone in and done an awful lot of work to bring this up to a level where it looks like, I mean, there's the pre-colored version. And you can see there the difference between this yeah. rubbled interior Mm. then unbelievable that where it just steps it up a couple of levels mm. and you're going okay this looks like something that has been filled in with top layers and you know mud mm. raining in and everything else the, the, the rest the things, rest of the yeah. building mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and obviously within throughout all of this you've got those tutorial bits where mm. <clears throat> They've gone in and been like, "This is how I achieve this result," yeah. uh, and stuff. And it's a nice, it's an interesting mix of both very heavily textualized discussion and that kind of thing, with also yeah. that pictorial reference that we talked about with the last one as well. Yeah. So. But, but like I say, this was an all-encompassing mm -hmm. um, tutorial because it isn't just about the 
Buildings, area, so. the history, whatever. It's also about the armies that are going to be fighting there. So you oh. get, you know, there's going to be a Hanumag and there are going to be units in them. And I'm picking them for these reasons because, <laughs> you know, they have X number of shots and therefore they're going to have this upgrade. So you get all of this sort of built in throughout it, uh, even down to when constructing the MDF, whether you want to use super glue, gel glue, um, PVA, the, the differentiation between them. Um, I'm working on things like the various miniatures as well. So there are metal, plastic, and resin kits in here, and it goes through all of them, how you assemble and clean them up, uh, doing conversion work. So um, that head is not the head that comes on that model. Um, a KB2 snuck in there, don't know why. <laughs> um, but yeah, and going back and, and painting up and repainting old models as well in, in the sort of the truer sense of the spring clean. Mm. So you get this whole um, build from, from ground up, essentially from I've got nothing or I've got a, a handful of Germans and I need to have a full German army, a full Soviet army, and the tabletop to play it on, <laughs> and, and the city to, to fight through, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's it's just marvelously well detailed. Um, he even manages to get a chat with Alessio Cavatori at one point. Uh, so there's a YouTube video in here where he chats to Alessio about bolt action and about the Stalingrad front, uh, which is fascinating. Uh, we'll have a look at the proper photograph. <laughs> <laughs> looks good ah uh, yeah like that's it. what i'd see if i was looking uh, yeah. uh across the battlefield <laughs> clearly so. he's focusing on this sniper. yeah, yeah. he's about to snipe this sniper yeah. that's cool yeah. Yeah. not not this one over here which is dull and in focus and everybody that's the dull. kind of thing you would see on one of those posters on the wall yeah. even mm. snipers need to be aware watch your watch your flank <laughs> yeah, so just thoroughly engaging uh and exceptional Very cool exceptionally well done absolutely finish from intelligent mr toad mm. uh, even a gestapo member mm. he's one step away from a low low <laughs> looking for the uh there is the, the madonna dog. with the big boobies yeah. <laughs> now we're demonetized is, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is why we're not normally <laughs> left um, <laughs> but yeah we were left unattended so that'll teach them mm. but yeah intelligent mr toad stunning but not yep. the winner no no there's one even more detailed than this. No way. <laughs> I've, I've already been told and had a peek at this one. But so. still still uh, staying with World War II. Mm. Um, and I'm going to start at the bottom from this one. But oh. uh, Bruce Lee decided to do some work on Hobart's Funnies, which were a set of tanks that were constructed for D-Day. <laughs> um, Johnson's Johnson excited face. To get, to, get them, to get them up the beach, essentially. Mm. So I'll start, actually, I'll start on the last page. So, <laughs> and the reason I'll start on the last page is there were some tanks he didn't make. Yeah. And therefore, Bruce, when he came to do this, didn't make them because they never actually seen service. But at the same time, he decided it was important that people knew that there were other funnies out there. And so you get this, um essentially historical document going <laughs> oh. here here are some reference photos but here are here Amazing. are ones they didn't make here's um things that never quite made the cut or they made one of it and therefore i'm not going to make any because only one of them appeared on one beach for like 20 minutes so yeah. what's the point um but you can see the various types the the flails the bridge layers and the like uh the the uh, for sales, is it the the bundles of wood for crossing uh, trenches? Um, but he he looked at all of these and went, "It'll come to you in an hour." I can, John. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Shall I, for I, scene. I, for scene. I knew it was something that were there. I was <laughs> They were. Some of them could be purchased, uh, in which case he purchased them, then upgraded them. Other ones could not be, so they had to be built from scratch. So, for example, wow. the carpet laying bobbin who made roads up the beach. Um, because, you know, sand is not a heavy vehicle's friend. No. Um, so he couldn't get one and therefore had to work out how to make in 15 mil the Bob and Lang Churchill, uh, starting with this little tank that has the snorkel on it for getting into the water and up the beach. Um, but then he had to actually just build the whole bobbin. And this is in exacting detail. Wow. That it's practically scale model levels wow. of, of um, ingenuity and exactitude. 
because you have all of the strats <laughs> being built. Here's Hardly. our strats. Here's our strats with cutouts, doubled up, and uh, then pivot points for the various armatures to be attached. He gets into the bobbin then, which is actually made from several tubes spliced together so that presumably, I, m I imagine it works. When I those really love together. that. <laughs> um, but again, the, it's not just the scale here because this could have gone into scale. It is the level of detail in the yes. actual sure. tutorial that really blew me away <sighs> because you're looking at something and you're going, okay, here are all the pieces here, why they're done this way. And also here's how you do them. So using a tube cutter to get the perfect cut. Yes. So you're not going to have a, a dodgy angle on the bobbins um, using a, uh, I actually have two of these. I've never realized that they're for fabric cutting. Um, I've always just assumed it was something that we had for cutting desks in plastic art for our tiny fighting models. But no, <laughs> apparently, apparently fabric patterners need them first. Um, <laughs> but after you've got things like the the actual conversions done, and like I say, this, this is one of many, many um, put together. You then need to go on and paint them. And so for painting, he then goes into the, the whole kit and caboodle about how he's going to paint them up, the colors they should be used. Um, he's going to use an airbrush. He actually has four. He then deconstructs the four he has and whether or not they're any good for beginners. Uh, if you've never airbrushed before, that's actually one of the best rundowns of some of these paint brushes I've seen. Wow. Um, and wow. why he's decided to yay or nay some of them. You know, one of them, one of them was a gift from a friend who didn't need it any longer type of thing. And it's like, yeah, it's not worth it. Don't don't buy this. If you don't have to, don't buy it. Because they're not a cheap investment in a lot of cases. Um, but every step along the way in exacting detail um to get every one of them done. John's going to pensive mode. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I know. You're, you're looking there and you're going, is that cable exactly right for that? Oh, and I'm going to go and say probably is, yeah. I, I've been looking at the Churchills and it's like, I, I know that me and Bruce are like amazing tread heads. And I, I love the fact, and I want to give him a big hug for it, that he put the deep wading exhausts on the back of the Churchill. Hmm. He made those out of brass rod. And I'm like, oh, you put that in there. That's great. That's Insert perfect. Simpsons nerd meme. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, even even little things. So you're not going to see it because it was on the front page, but the uh, scoop on the front of this. Oh, uh, yeah. These two little feet to actually just allow to be pushed forward across sand or dirt have a slight incline like skis. They just go up at the front. Yep. And so he shows how he put that in a vice and then just sort of clamped it to push that bend into the plastic card because um, it wouldn't ordinarily be sitting flat. Whereas wow. you could you could have quite happily just put roughly shaped flat feet on the front and not worry about that that slope on it. Perfection. But, but then they would have dug into the sand when you're going up the beach at Normandy and then yep. that whole thing would have ripped off and then you'd just look very silly as a crew of a tiny 15 mil thing. So there you go. Half a scene, you're right. Well done, you. Yeah. <laughs> Go team. Ten points to Gryffindor. Well done. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's it is a thing of consummate beauty and skill, but at the same time, another one where, for historicals Thorough. especially, yeah. thorough tutorial. The, Absolutely, the amount of detail that is in there is probably more than most people will need. However, there will be people who go actually. I could really do with making a few of these or using these, or I'll use this mm. as a stepping off point for a project yeah, of yeah. my own. Don't need to go into this much detail. Don't even need to do these in 15 mil. This would equally work for bold action. Um, mm. You know, just scaling these things up because the measurements are in yeah. there. If you know what size these are in one one hundredth, then you know what size they are in one fifty six. Fifty six ish. Ish. Um, and you can use them paint wise. That's going to apply regardless of what scale you're in, um, all the way through. The only thing he hasn't got is the decals on them because I think he's waiting on Dom's decals and Dom, nice um, look, but he can be slow, slow, slow. So he's made, he's he's getting a set of decals then for the the correct yeah. regiment and divisions and stuff. Yeah, oh yeah, perfect. very much so. Oh. There's there's the carpet, which I was kind of disappointed to find out wasn't just like a dodgy. Uh, like Axminster Wave carpet, 
they're, just gonna, <laughs> they're going to normandy they just go to a local carpet warehouse in london oh, yeah. somewhere and just go right we need these we need like 50 odd feet of each of these to put on a bobbin on the front of a tank it doesn't matter what it looks like mate just throw a paisley <laughs> pattern yeah go for it roll yeah. out the red carpet let's go any of that yeah um but again it it's just so much detail so much time yeah uh, and so much good instructional detail as well yep. it's very concise and very easy to follow um which means if he chooses to come back to this in years down the line and go knows exactly what i'm going to add yeah. to this yeah. he knows exactly what it is and if anybody just wants to come in and go i don't want to like lloyd sit there and go i'm not sure what color these churchills should be staring at them for 18 odd years um because i know he, he has churchills and he's always complaining he doesn't know exactly what they should you know what color should it be and then if you look online everybody has their own ideas mm. of what colors they should be coming in at yep. um just copy bruce lee there you literally yep. just come yeah. in here and steal all of the paints yeah and get them this is really, really good this yeah. is absolutely superb and i bet once he's got the the transfers down on them and they're weathered in Mm -hmm. these these are going to be some of the the finest 15 mil tanks I, i've seen out there mm -hmm. by by far because like the amount of work and effort the the fact that there's so much detail in there that maybe 10 percent of the people that know what they're looking at will know what they're looking at mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> but they'll understand and yeah there's the onion which apparently they didn't bother with the onion <laughs> kind of everything it's the only thing he's really like missing bother is um He's just missing a Normandy beach photo scene that he can set them all in. So I suggest he contacts Soap Dodger and get him to start yeah. working on that immediately. <laughs> Collab. Yeah. But yeah, so, so that brilliant, was- Brilliant work. Yeah. Absolutely. That was our, our overall best tutorial winner uh, for the man who blew my mind. And then I made sure he blew everybody else's. Yep. And just absolutely superb. Yeah. So yeah. As, a, well as a reminder to everyone who was announced as a winner, they will be listed down below in the description. But you have to head on over to the website, to ontabletop.com, and there is a prize claim form. You will have seen it in some of the graphics on the show anyway, but go and click through to that, and you'll get your voucher to spend on the store. Maybe maybe on some more Flames and War stuff, Bruce Lee. We'll see. So. Could, be. Could be. Everybody's winners, but some are more winners than others. But well done, everybody who took part in the Spring Clean Challenge. Indeed. Always awesome. Yeah, Fantastic to go through all of your entries, even if it meant I was up to the wee small hours many a night with the candle burning. <laughs> uh, but yeah, terrific stuff. Brilliant. We are going to take a quick break, and we're <laughs> going to come back and have a look at some Kickstarters. Did you win one of our prizes? Find out on our prize claim center over at ontabletop.com. Here we list all our previous prizes and those who have won. If you see your username, fill out the form to claim your prize. All prizes must be claimed within 30 days. So, Benjamino, what's everybody talking about the world of Kickstarter? <laughs> so, uh, we've got one big one that has uh, been rocking Kickstarter this week uh, from the folks at Mythic Games. Um, they have teamed up with Ubisoft. Uh, to do Six Siege, the board game, based off the very successful uh, Rainbow Six uh, sort of team-based shooter that will be very familiar to a lot of you on PC and consoles. Um, and in actual fact, with this one, you guys have actually had a chance to play it. And we even yeah. have a Let's Play up on the site at the moment okay. with between Warren and Jerry, who entirely skipped novice mode and went straight to expert or whatever. The, the, I, I, tell you, the, I tell you what's worse than that. <laughs> we, we entirely skipped novice mode, and then I took a very simple chess clock, and I'm a very simple man, and I was unable to put the two arms in the same place to start the chess <laughs> clock going. And, and we didn't realize that until I was filming the chess clock after like turn one going, is that right? Going, is it going backwards? It's going backwards. Let's set, them, let's set them both to where they are right now. And then we start again. I'm going, no, they are going forward. I must have just set the other one wrong the first time. Now I've got to set them again. So it took me three attempts to set a simple manual chest. You got off. there in the end. Yeah. And all through that, they were raiding a building and shooting each other and blowing things up. So yeah, uh, it. let me it's, know what you guys have been thinking I, about I'll it. I'll tell you what, it's, it was fascinating, but it wasn't half as much fun as the four player game that I played with John uh, and Justin yeah. and Shay, which will it'll be coming out at some point yeah. later Ooh. on. Um but it's a, a fascinating game, John. <laughs> That's a word. No, no, that is a word, isn't it? That is a word. 
Um, <laughs> we were using a chess clock, and for people who are unaware, the, the game itself has an app that you do not have to use. Uh, and the app wasn't ready whenever we were filming, but we chose to use a chess clock instead. And I think what happens is when you're playing, you've got various sort of scenarios. So you're either playing the terrorists or you're playing the uh, counter terrorist unit, uh, going in to either extract a hostage, deal with a bomb or uh, like an area control type of game, like a, like almost like a capture the flag type of thing. Um, and if somebody gets shot, then their time goes off. So you get so many seconds per player, per character to play through. So you're playing with maybe five minutes per turn. Every man's worth 60 seconds. And if they get shot in the face, then you lose a minute. So your next turn, you've only got four. So you don't have this thing, which some games have, where it doesn't matter that you lose people because you gain the time back later on. You, you have a more time to play with when you've got less people and therefore you've got more time to adjust to your circumstances. <clears throat> you don't have that. It is very much a ticking clock. Mm. When people go away, then you've got to just try and get dumped in there. And I think the app also adds in other things like if you mess this up, then you lose 30 seconds. And if, mm. for example, there's a, like a line of sight mechanic where you have to go, I think I can shoot you in the face and there's no cover. And then your target goes either yes, and you just take the shot, or no, I think you're completely wrong. And if they, if you have to measure and check line of sight, it slows down the game. So to keep the game progressing at a, a fast clip, um, you actually have this thing where if you make a call and you're in the wrong, you lose something. So oh, in, the app, okay. in the app, that's taken care of yeah. by losing time or whatever. Uh, we weren't playing with that, so we made up our own rules where it penalized you quite heavily so if you were shooting and you went i think i can hit you and your opponent goes mm, no and then they check and you could have hit them then you get to re-roll a dice or if cool. you couldn't have hit them yeah. then they lose dice type of thing so we just came up with different ways but we were starting with a very small i think uh there's six figures in the prototype game john mm -hmm. and, and we got to pick five per side yeah yeah. Did we have yeah we had five per side in our game yeah. yeah because one of the things they've done with this is obviously because they've based it so you've got the two teams of operators yeah and each of them's applicable to the ones that are available in the in the game so you have the likes of sledge and and all that kind of thing mm -hmm. in there yeah. and they each have their own unique abilities and stuff as well which is pretty mm -hmm. cool um and obviously their own models too um but the the, the thing that I, i'd be interested to hear from you guys is because obviously from the way you've described it and sort of watching the let's play it kind of feels like the video game in a way yeah. where you have that limited amount of time and when <clears throat> things go badly they go badly very quickly and then they get the round is over kind of thing in mm -hmm. the video game does it still have that kind of video game feel when you're playing this or is it or have they abstracted it a little bit in, in places and stuff i haven't played the video game so I can't tell you if it has the video is it game tense feel. jerry yeah. is it tense and quick <laughs> that's better <laughs> what i will what i will say is when things go wrong oh boy do they go wrong yeah. <laughs> well there you go that's perfect when, then yeah. when you leave your when you leave yourself out in the open uh yeah. you will find that it doesn't matter who's shooting at you you become dead very very quickly oh right. yeah that's that game uh, then, yeah. that is very on and, and they're, in, yeah. they're interesting things like this the leaning mechanic that you have here mm. allows you to occupy two spaces so you can right. lean around corners and gain cover. But it also means if you're playing something like a, a scenario that has control where you you need somebody to be in a room, you can actually cover multiple places. Cool. Yeah. But then at the same time, if people creep up behind you, <laughs> it doesn't really help you that you're, no. you know, you're leaning around the corner because yeah. they'll just shoot you in the back of the head. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it was very fast to play. The, the mechanics are very simple. Mm. So you can get into it quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but there's that level of detail on top about who goes when, where they can go and what they can do that you find you have to make decisions very quickly and you can make yeah. what seems like a great decision very fast. And then in hindsight, you're going, oh dear, actually, I've, <laughs> I've left myself open massively. Why did I crawl into that vent? <laughs> well, this is the other thing you can, uh, you can jump up, I'm trying to see if we can see on this. No, no, there was a board. There is some gameplay there. stuff later on in there. There was a board the, yeah, further up, yeah. but I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling down. I'm not going to go up because there's a lot going on here. Um, you, you have two levels. You have the ground 
floor that you're fighting on and then you also have access points to an upper level and the upper level has a limit on the amount of people who can occupy it so it's two per side mm -hmm. but when you're up there you can either overwatch onto an access point whether it's the top of the stairs or a vent or you can use it to quick travel essentially so you can go up a vent on the east side of the building and then the following turn come down on the north or west side right. allowing you to skip a lot of rooms that you ordinarily would have had to travel through so the speed of movement up there is is fantastic mm -hmm. um but obviously they're out of play while they're up there so you have this sort of level that is accessible and is very tough to get into but we discovered if we just had somebody hiding up there um they were very difficult to dig out because you really have to <laughs> sacrifice a player uh or character rather to get up and, and take them out get out of that goddamn that. vent <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, were, we were only playing on on a single board the console uh console right. board yeah. so i don't know if other board setups will have potentially more right that would be interesting or more yeah. rooms so instead of having three people able to upset uh, access mm. the upper floor <sighs> it may you know be three or four or one or mm. you know changing up how you can avail of that top floor changes massively what's going on down below um and you really do need to be i mean your partner needs to be 100 percent with you um, <laughs> uh, and when that second let's play comes out we'll see exactly how that played out um <laughs> Uh, yes, Captain Alpha Strike for for once. For, <laughs> not, no. mm, yeah, don't spoil we'll just it. Just leave it there. Yeah, we'll yeah. leave it there. Yeah, cool. just just there. It's a yeah. But it's 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 a beautiful game, and the, even the cardboard components in it for the tables and the like mm. are are very good. The fact that they're having these sort of three D uh, decorating sets they're great. Good. Yeah, even they look fresh play, from the game. They do. Yeah, even if they're you're not brilliant. Playing this, it was funny. I, I said I say that in the let's play as well. It's like, oh, there's bound to be three D terrain. Mm. Yeah, beyond the beyond the clip together. Yeah, uh, sort of basic set. Yes, yeah, so there's a map there. You can see these little bits. Oh, oh, that's cool. Palm round. That's so, brilliant. And uh, from what I read in the Kickstarter site, you've got that core set which comes with a set of uh, the operators for the attackers and defenders, mm -hmm. and then you have the two boards which is double sided. Right. Um, then. There's, I think it's like five expansion packs, yes. each yep. with between six and eight. I think it's eight for most of them, and then the last one has six operators. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole bunch of additional ones in there. Then you have two map pack books that have been done for this too. Um, and I believe there is going to be retail stuff for this, mm -hmm. but they are uh, there is some like Kickstarter exclusive stuff as well, which is like alternative sculpts and that kind of thing, as, mm -hmm. which is pretty neat. And obviously you get the discount. For doing a Kickstarter version of it, but uh, it certainly looks like a uh, an in depth one. Um, yeah. If you are massively into Siege, I think. <laughs> I think yeah. it is, even it if it is you're not. Yeah, even if you're not, because I think it's only it was only Shay in our Let's Play that's actually played the games, and he's oh, a yeah. major Rainbow Six fan. Okay, right. Yeah. So he, I think he was basically taking command of that entire game. <laughs> <laughs> First time on camera too, so good for him. Go on, Shay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Look, look out for that one uh, yeah. but, it, but yeah, so, so it was interesting for you guys who'd never mm. played the, or, well you were at least aware of it but you'd never played the game to yeah. be like ah this is nice and easy to pick up and dive into like when I was watching the let's play between you and Warren Jerry it seemed like mm. Warren was very it was very quick and easy to dive in and just doing what he wanted to do mm. yeah yep. you, you've got like I say there's the ease of mechanics but then you have a lot of additional pieces that can be layered on on top yeah um, that we probably didn't explore a huge amount. So things like the uh, counterinsurgents having access to drones. Yeah. So they can scout rooms beforehand. Um, the terrorists having access to bulletproof cameras and things like that. And then using the fact that once people have been pinged and, and let up essentially for the rest of the team, then that you can attack them via the um, weak spots and walls. We didn't really explore things. that yeah, yeah, yeah. hugely. Mm -hmm. Um, which we could have done. So th there's a lot more depth to the game beyond what nice. we started yeah. toying around with simply mm. because we were just getting to grips with the the actual game and the mechanics. But once you know that you can chuck smoke into a room and then try and sneak through and not be picked up by the cameras or you can use the upper levels to try That's and right. the cameras that are watching rooms um, and potentially once you've, you know the ins and outs of that, 
you become very aware of how you should be approaching a breach scenario because it's not a kick open the door, run in with your gun and spray the whole area and win heroic type thing. It's it's more like kick open the door, spray the whole room, and then somebody shoots you through a stud wall. <laughs> yeah. They've seen you coming. Or there's a claymore, so you kick open the door and then you scatter yourself over the large <laughs> area very, very quickly. We never got a chance to play with the claymores, but you know things like that. Yeah. Um, can change up the whole aspect of the game immediately and even things like the characters are either (laughs) fully playable or recruits and if you play them as fully playable then they have all their abilities if they're a recruit then they just have their basic stat line and lose their special Mm -hmm. abilities so using even the sort of the core set of six and then changing who are the main operators with their abilities lit up and who are just recruits who are tagging along for the ride can change drastically how those two factions play out as well so nice yeah there's yeah. there's a lot going on with it it's, it seems to be doing very well <laughs> yep. so yeah. clearly I mean, clearly people are on board for this i'm i mean it, uh, what i love about these ones i do it with steam quite a lot when i because i play my console and obviously play board games when i see the two crossover it's fascinating for me to see where they all meet in the middle hmm. So Siege, for example, Siege is something that I've played for ages. We have LAN parties in Blaze Siege. And seeing the different factors and how they implement them into a board game absolutely blows my mind. So when you were saying about how they have the different abilities with the characters, implementing the drones, that on a board makes perfect sense when you show it that way. But without mm-hmm. me seeing that, it's, yeah, it's fascinating. It's absolutely mm-hmm. fascinating. It looks, it really does look true to the uh, the video. Yeah. I, I'm just going to say, like, it's cool to have the miniatures in there, but I like everything else was made out of cardboard and stuff, right? I would have been nice to have standees as an option. Mm. I think that would be cool. <laughs> but anyway, that's just a nerdy board game. Me, so. <laughs> I get you, it, Ben. <laughs> you can put those miniatures to, uh, just put those miniatures on eBay and buy yourself. Yeah, I was going to get some five card- yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask Wofun to make me some plastic versions. Just, there you yeah, go. Yeah, just get Print and models. laminate, Ben. Yeah. Print and laminate. But yeah, so there, there's a week left to run uh on i'm going to say six siege we keep calling it rainbow six siege because that's the name of it but i presumably they've called it six siege so that if people are googling it they don't automatically differentiate computer game Uh, so yeah so uh a week left seven days on mythic games six siege if you're interested check out the let's play there's still plenty of time before you jump in um it is well funded though so yep. i imagine there's a few more stretch goals to go on the sure. as they tend to be mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> but that's us so that's our first week back uh that was a long one yeah. you expecting that were you kids <laughs> uh, mm, well, you won't ask aren't you all inspired yeah. to do more no. hobby now after seeing oh, no. that so, yeah. so it's a great chance to sit back down with john because so rarely is he allowed to bite through the chain that uh, <laughs> keeps him painting um, yeah but yeah we shall move on, folks. You enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll be back on Sunday with our XLBS. Who knows who will have in for that one? <laughs> we certainly don't. <laughs> Could go either way. Uh, if you want the chance to win that prize, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And if you want to check out if you're a past winner, then go over to ontabletop.com and check the prize claim center. So until Sunday, bye bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.